Okay, hey, we are ready. Okay, it's the reverb by the reverb. So, good. Okay, good evening, and welcome to the Village of Marinick Board of Trustees work session uh, for May twenty third, twenty twenty two. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Uh, good evening. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the op well, the first item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, Ogie, call a roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Step four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, no, no, sorry. Uh, do me a favor, get that off the screen. You can. The webinar is being recorded. I think I think you have to click. No, no, no. It's Ogie. Oh. Thank you, Ogie. Got it. All right. Uh, on the call tonight, and I don't want to keep them because it's. Uh, He's on the clock. Is uh, Jerry and I see Jeff on is on a call. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the DPW foreman going to attend to? No, I'm taking care of that. You're taking care of it. Right, what is Mr. On on for? Playgrounds. For playgrounds? Yep. All right. What, what what item is that on the agenda? Where is that, Jerry? Jefferson Avenue, F, 2F. 2F. Okay, it's on for next, okay, let's talk about it. Jefferson Avenue Playground needs improvement. This is on the corner of Jefferson and uh, North Barry Avenue. I'm sorry. Uh, please take it away. Jeff? Good evening, everybody. Uh, we're looking to uh, do a Jefferson Avenue playground reconstruction. Uh, it's been a large number of years since that park has been upgraded and uh, the equipment is outdated and getting hard to replace and find replacement pieces for. So we reached out to Miracle Recreation, which is on uh, source well bidding for uh, new equipment. Uh, for the sum of $197,868.88. Uh, we also received some quotes for some infra infrastructure work, uh, replacing uh, blacktop, walkways, uh, new curbing to hold in the rubber playground surface, uh, all new perimeter fencing, uh, new blacktop basketball court with color coat. Um, we got a couple prices. Ranging, uh, one of the lowest ones was 145,000. Um, with this, we're requesting a contingency built into the project, not to exceed 20% of the infrastructure quote, equaling 29,000, because the we don't know what the cost of blacktop and cement and raw materials is gonna be at the time we perform the work. So that's equaling 29,000, bringing the total to 371,000 $868.88. Um, we're recommending the funding would be sourced out of the budget line trust account. Uh, the account currently has a balance of $432,769.39. Okay, just so the public knows, we talk about the recreation trust account. This is an account that was set up uh, in the uh, late, late. You know, the beginning of the century, <laughs> uh, like 07, 08, and it was to require uh, folks that came into the community and for every new unit they built, I believe they had to put $8,500 into the account. And this is what's accumulated so far. So th this is actually what that money was supposed to be used for. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
Jason, are you here for the same thing? Yes, Mayor. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, I would just like to add that uh, our goal with uh, each of these new playground installation is to make them in inclusive, meaning that we're going to install ramps so that they're wheel wheelchair accessible. All of our gates will be inclusive for accessibility purposes. Um, the ramps are, are great because even the young ones, instead of going up steps, they're running up and down. Um, so that's our goal is to design the park so that they're inclusive. Whereas right now, uh, if uh, a person with a disability or someone that is in a wheelchair, it might be difficult for them to enjoy our playground equipment. Uh, so that's all I would like to add in, in designing this. Me and Jeff were, 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 that was one of our priorities to make sure that, that our playgrounds are inclusive. Okay. Uh, questions or concerns from this board? All right, so we have competitive bid for all of the work or not, or just part of it? I, I misunderstood what, or I didn't quite hear what Jeff had to say. So the, the equipment itself is on the source well contract? I'm sorry, the equipment uh, is like on the contract? And I got three estimates for the infrastructure work, we'll call it the blacktop, the curving, the curbing, the fencing, uh, the new basketball court, the painting of the court. Uh, they're installing all the uh, benches for us. That would be that would fall under the infrastructure. So, so there are uh, contracts that we can participate in without having to go out to competitive uh, The company that Jeff mentioned is something called Miracle Playground Equipment. Uh, they are on what's known as the called the source well contract, which we can participate in. Uh, We've done a lot of business with Sourcewell. Uh, the, this is very similar to the approach that we took for the Warren Avenue playground several years ago, uh, whereby we purchased and had the playground equipment there, uh, uh, purchased and sold through the Sourcewell contract. Uh, and Jeff is getting quotes on the infrastructure work. We're looking to, uh, if we can, use uh, one of our existing contractors with a public works contract that has many these items try and expedite the process. Um, I would just like to note the, the playground equipment is about 10 to 12 months once we receive a, a approval from the board and, and the Jerry and the purchase order goes out. So the, the source well, we bring in the source well contract to you now because we know that, you know, it's going to take a while to get this equipment ordered. Um, and that also, you know, is anticipation of the ACE project starting and we do end up losing portions or all of Columbus Park. Uh, we really want to renovate, you know, Jefferson and then maybe Stanley next to try to get the parks closest to that community that are in really bad shape. An, an alternative for folks that might not be able to use Columbus Park if that does happen. And as, as someone who now uh, uses playgrounds again, uh, I, I could say both of those parks really need a touch up. And we've been uh, addressing our playgrounds in a systematic way over the last several years. Well, first we did uh, Florence Avenue Playground, uh, then we did Warren Avenue. Uh, we had planned to look at Jefferson a couple of years ago, but uh, between the pandemic, that kind of delayed our, uh, our planning process for a project like this. I can tell you, Stanley Avenue Park was redone uh, and there was a committee formed and I know my ex was on the committee uh, because my daughter was like one or two at the time and uh, we lived on Stanley Avenue. And uh, so now her children are playing in Stanley Avenue Park on the equipment that was put in 30 years ago. I was talking to before we talked to Trustee Young about CDBG program. That was CDBG. It was a, that was a CDBG project. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's what's the realistic time frame on this? Uh, well, I think we heard it. You, know, you said 10 to 12 years. months, but I mean, with given uh, delays in delivery, do you what would you guess when? And will the, the, I, I imagine the, the park will be closed for a while while they. Um, while they uh, renovate it. Yeah, so we're looking at 10 to 12 months just to get the equipment in. And then after that, we're, we're looking at about a two month process. So the park will remain open un, un, uh, until you start construction in 10 to 12 months. The park, will, the park will remain open until we get all the equipment in and get the construction scheduled. Then once the construction is scheduled, that's when we'll close the park. So the park will probably be closed to the public for most two months 
but I'm thinking closer to six weeks. All right. Okay. Well, that's not bad. Trustee Natchez had a question. Yeah. Um, there's been a Please lot of the mic down. There have been a lot of suggestions uh, for the designs of upgrading the parks to have um, near um, equipment, i.e. equipment designed for seniors workouts as opposed to just children and teenagers and uh, others, uh, let's say, on the younger side. Uh, is, is, does this design include that or not? This, this this design does not include uh, exercise equipment or or senior equipment. Do you, do you think that's something that is desired? I think that I think that we would have to I would have to dig a little deeper in terms of demographics and find out where the best location for that would be. I don't know if Jefferson is, but I think. I would want to dig a little deeper, and if that's interesting, the community to find a spot that it would work uh, in the best park. Jason, are we still Jason, planning? What I think are we still planning to have pickleball at Stanley? Uh, correct, Jerry. Yes, that is our plan. Is to uh, when we get to that uh, renovation, me and Jeff are, are working on that because uh, that yeah. is a big senior activity. Probably the number one request we and Jeff get from seniors is pickleball. Right. Um, so we are in the process of trying to paint some lines on our existing court at Warren Avenue to uh, fulfill those senior requests uh, because I get them weekly um, and then obviously build a full on pickleball court at Stanley Avenue when we do the reconstruction. Um, but in terms of the senior population, pickleball is the number one for exercise. I've never gotten a request for like exercise equipment for seniors. Uh, but we have gotten some requests for like stretching stations at Florence Park and uh, they make outdoor resistance type lifting equipment. Uh, we've gotten some requests for that. Um, but we can look into it more if that's something the board desires for sure. Well, you know, I, I would you, think, wait, excuse me, I would think that it would be helpful to have that in all of our parks. I'm not suggesting you have people in the park. But I am suggesting that there are types of things of exercising and stretching uh, that if we are really updating our parks to be full service, we should be full service for a growing population uh, in this community and not just located in one park. Uh, we're doing it for, we should be doing it for all the parks. So I would hope that we can, you know, that this can be included in whatever we're doing. We're spending a lot of money uh, which is, you know, needed, but I think that we also should be upgrading that, you know, to a, to a segment of this community that has been vastly overlooked in terms of uh, servicing. Well, then we know what we should do is we should do some sort of a survey to see what exactly seniors would desire. Good idea. Yeah, you may speak. Okay, um, it's funny that Dan brought this up because twice in the past week it's been mentioned to me uh, by seniors that they would like some kind of a equipment, uh, exactly what, uh, what Dan's talking about. So perhaps the board should give uh, the, uh, the staff some direction as we go forward that we include uh, uh, seniors uh, as well. I mean, uh, up, to, up to now we haven't, we haven't done that, but we ought, to, we ought to do that going forward. I think that's what I've been asking for. I think that's what you're asking for. Sure. Uh, and I think that this design needs to be altered to include that. Uh, and if that requires additional money, then, then that's what it should be. But we shouldn't be overlooking this, and we have a growing number of uh, seniors, uh, you know, that need um, relative, some very active and some just what I call passive active stretching type things. Um, and I'm not sure just a sur survey is uh, relevant. I think that there are great, great many sources that can help us help guide us in that. And I would like not to get bogged down with a long term survey. Uh, you don't think asking people what they would like is relevant? No, I think it's very relevant. And I, I, I've been talking to a lot of people and I've heard a lot of suggestions uh, ranging from the pickleball to stretching and you know, type of equipment. Some do it on the, uh, on the kids' uh, 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 facilities uh, at, uh, which kids don't like, but it, it isn't, they're not high enough and they're not uh, uh, sturdy enough to be able to hold a lot of you know, people with um, 
you know, a fair amount of weight. I, I'd hate to see us yeah, hold I, this I, up. Uh, I don't want to hold this up. So, can I just add one thing? Yeah. Um, I live in that neighborhood. That's the park I went to as a kid. Um, I visit the park every day in my uh, morning drive-bys of each and every park. And the demographic of that area isn't on the older side. It's, it's on the younger side. The, the neighborhood, everybody who visits that park is in walking distance of that park. Everybody is young couples up from the city, young couples who just had children. Um, everybody who visits that park is probably, I would say 30 or below. Um, it's, it's more geared towards little children. There's a, um, a nursery or, or I forgot the word for it, daycare down the street that frequently visits that park. I, I understand what you're saying about the stretching equipment and the working workout equipment. I'm just saying, I don't think Jefferson Avenue Park would fit that demographic of that kind of equipment. Okay, you know, um, I, I think that as a policy, we should be doing this. Uh, I don't want to hold this up, but I would like this included. Uh, and I would hope the rest of the board would uh, so, endorse that because so, it's something that's, uh, I appreciate what you're saying, I, Jeff, uh, but we, you know, when you don't have equipment there, you're not going to attract the people to use it. When you do have it, people do use it. Okay. I think, um, I, I think that uh, what, having been at the Parks and Rec Committee meetings where this was approved by the Parks and Rec Commission, it's been discussed by them several times. Um, is there any more room in the park to add anything or do you, you'd have to go to redesign it? Can you add, is there, is there any way to add a different kind of equipment someplace else or does it have to go to redesign? So the, the, problem, with adding, we, the problem with adding more equipment is we're trying to make the park accessible to all. So the mm -hmm. ramps take up a lot of space. Yep. So to redesign that equipment would make it almost 100% not accessible to all of them. Because you come to a point where you're talking about taking up green space, which is used a lot in that park. There's a lot of kids who play football, uh, baseball, soccer in the green space that's there. And I think it's important to leave that green space in the park. Because you still have kids who, who play the sports and the activities and tag and, and that. You don't want to take up all the green space in the park then it becomes more like an urban park. So I guess my question was, if this is something that we want to do going forward, it has to, it needs to be going forward. Otherwise, this where we are now, we'd have to start again with this park. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or, or we would have to remove the grass, which might not be the best option. But I think in Trustee Notches's, we can look at it for Stanley. Uh, when we do redesigns, we can look at it at Florence uh, because that's, the walking path area and there's a big patch of grass there's mm -hmm. definitely places where that equipment would make sense and i also think that would make us ahead of the times i don't i mean i visit a lot of parks in our areas and that would be we would be ahead of people if we did put that equipment in for that population or or just anyone who wants to stretch so okay. so i think it's a good idea okay let, 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 let me let me jump in here uh i think that this is a question uh, we, sh we should send to the rec committee for them to do a little research about what would be the best kind of equipment that the seniors could use. Uh, I, I, I want to have, you know, I don't want to put something in and then have it not be used because that, that's the worst thing you can have. Uh, so if, I'd like to see the rec committee do a little work on that and come back to us with proposals. But as we have this in front of us tonight, and we already know that it's a 10 month lead time to get this equipment in. And that will already bring us into uh, 23. Uh, and so this wouldn't be done until the end of the summer, best case of uh, 23, uh, best case scenario. Um, and that, that is uh, a long time in the uh, life of a toddler. Uh, so is there a consensus to move this to the regular meeting for June 13, 2022? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Victor's shaking his head in the affirmative. Okay. Then we all we have on a moratorium study, and there's folks here for that. Uh, there's Chairperson uh, Savolt, uh, Mr. Gottlieb, uh, and Ms. Lay. Is that right? Lay. 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 Lay.
Yeah. Is Neil in the wings? There yep, he is. there's Neil. The handsome devil. There's a great glamour shot of him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you Thank guys. You. Thank you both very much. Uh, enjoy your night with your families. All right, Orgy, did you get that set up? All right. Uh, okay. Just to go over the, the uh, history of this, uh, I proposed a moratorium study uh, on the C1 and C2 zones to, to study the feasibility of removing infill housing in the C1 and C2 zones. Uh, infill housing is allowed in our commercial zones. C1 and C2 is commercial one, commercial two. Uh, explain what infill housing is. Yeah, uh, that was part of what I was doing right now. Thanks, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of communities don't have infill housing. Uh, your commercial zone is your commercial zone, and your, your uh, residential zone is your residential zone. Uh, the village of Mamaronek, uh, a long time ago, uh, probably in the 80s, uh, decided that there's a lot of uh, property that wasn't being developed in the commercial zones and uh, was uh, going uh, to seed. So one of the ways to uh, increase development and uh, you know, uh, fix up uh, neglected properties was to build, uh, to build residential housing. And uh, there was a lot of housing built. Uh, all over the community. Uh, most of the big developments are the result of C1 and C2 uh, infill housing. Uh, the board then decided uh, that we also wanted to look at RM3 uh, in the flood zone and whether that should be limited to because that is the other opportunity uh, in the flood zone to uh, have large developments uh, put into place. And, and the idea, uh, at least from my point of view, the idea is that you know we have uh, areas that we know uh, are always going to flood in one degree or another. Hopefully, uh, we will be able to mitigate the effects of that uh, through our uh, work and through the Army Corps of Engineers' work. But we're never going to be able to get rid of it entirely. So since that's the case, does it make sense to put more people in harm's way? Uh, does it make sense to uh, force our uh, EMS workers uh, to have to risk their life and limb uh, to access people in uh, harm's way? As, as you can see from uh, Mr. Barbario's uh, screensaver there, uh, that, that is a shot of uh, some of our volunteers. Uh, I think that's from the 07 flood, uh, rescuing people uh, who were trapped uh, from flood wars. Because I do firmly believe that we have been extremely lucky in this community to not have a large loss of life due to the catastrophic flooding. Uh, but I, I, I don't want to keep rolling that dice, those dice. So that, that's where I come from on this. Uh, so that, that, that's my little, like, why this mattered to me. <laughs> um, so we have an updated memorandum from Mr. Desai. Uh, everybody has that in front of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we also have uh, folks from our planning department and our, uh, our planning board. So uh, Ashley and Charles and Kathleen, do, do you guys have a, a, a point of view that you're here to express tonight? Anybody want to take the lead on that? Let's start with you, Mr. Gottlieb. Or oh, Kathy, I see Kathy's unmuted herself. So, uh, We're here at the request of the board. I, I know. I, I, I don't know if, if I, I, I understand you're here at the request. Uh, I, I, I thought it was a premature request myself. Uh, so I, I, I Perhaps I, some, I, of the, for some of the board members um, other, other than you have, who have different points of view would like to speak before we chime in or, or uh, our, our consulting planner or our land use attorney 
<laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, 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 they, they've had their opportunity. You were here and I was going to give you the opportunity to speak first. Yeah, but if they want to well, chime in, they can chime in. But, you know, I'll, I'll handle that. Thanks. Anybody on the board? I do, yeah, I do. I, I am um, concerned that, and this is a question for the lawyers, <laughs> if we're going to have a moratorium that's just about residential, see, in, 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 C1 and C2, um, and that we're not looking, I mean, I think, if, you know, I'm not sure we can absolutely say just that there's not gonna be any housing because then we go back directly to commercial. But if we're gonna adopt a moratorium um, that's on, and we're only gonna study housing, is it appropriate, A, to not build anything commercial as well if we're not allowing, and now some, a commercial developer might, you know, not be interested in developing something if they can't develop housing. But if we're if we're not changing the commercial rules, why are we having a moratorium that blocks everything? Is that an okay thing to do? Can you do a moratorium without actually studying all of the uses? If you're if you're prohibiting all the uses, don't you need to study all the uses? That's number one. And number two, um, I'm concerned that if we just eliminate housing in the C in the C in infill housing in C1, C2, and RM3, that we're not doing anything to, to simultaneously yet, and I'm not saying we can't, evaluate proposals for zoning changes that would make all construction more flood safe. So I, that those are, I just feel like, I'm not sure we have the right, we've asked the right question and we have, the, we have to figure out what the right scope is, both on a legal perspective and a perspective of really trying to mitigate flooding and build as flood safe construction as possible. So the question. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Charlie Gottlieb. Well, Charlie, hold on, Charlie. Uh, the village attorney was gonna answer that. Oh, sorry. So I, I think the, uh, the answer to that is that the parameters under which you're operating and you're adopting a moratorium, there are really two constraints, right? One is time. Mm -hmm. It has to be reasonable in terms of time. And the other, it has to be reasonable in terms of scope. Mm -hmm. So you're right, Trustee Luke, it has to be reasonable in terms of what you're looking at. Uh, the, more, the, the moratorium has to be reasonable in terms of what you're looking at. So, I, I think to try to address your specific question about whether uh, it's appropriate to stop commercial development if all you're thinking of changing is residential development. I think given the zoning in the C1, C2, and I think the RF3, I'm not 100% sure about what's in the RF3. There's certainly a relationship between commercial and residential. Right, you're, 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 you're sort of two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. And so I certainly could argue, I think successfully, that there's a rational basis, which is the only standard, there's a rational basis for stopping all development while you're studying whether to do, uh, whether to reduce and fill housing. I think I could argue the other side too, because I think it's, a, I think there's a, I think either way, it's a rational decision. Mm -hmm. And really, it's a policy choice for you. I just want to be clear: the, the moratorium I proposed does not stop all development; it just stops residential development. That's correct. So it, there, there was never a proposal to stop all development in C one and C two zone. It was just residential infill development. It's a little vague, Tom. It, was, it, sure it wasn't okay. vague. I, I, it, it was. It was actually explicit. No. Um, I mean, I thought it, sucked. it wasn't clear in the draft. It would be. Yeah, because it, it, it was explicitly said for infill housing. You want some sense? Um, uh, well, I, I would say that we would actually be justified in, 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 in pausing on all construction uh, in the flood zone since all construction impacts flooding, either positively or negatively, depending on what it, uh, what it replaces. But if it's only uh, for housing, then it's only for housing. But uh, the uh, the other issues that Trustee Lucas raised um, are all the things we need to look at during that pause. And and I'm I'm adamant that it, it, it be no longer than six months 
So once we begin, uh, we need to really drill down and, and, and decide what it is we want to do uh, because the clock's ticking. Right. Well, I think we need a scope before we adopt the moratorium. I mean, because otherwise we're we're not going to make it in six months. We don't have a track record of doing more. Do, Bob will tell you. There's a scope of work, Mr. Decides. Right, but I don't. I, I don't think it deals with with. It doesn't deal with the construction and with changing the construction. It just evaluates whether or not we can eliminate infill housing. And I think we need to think about. You know, I, I know that we're that there are some model laws that are proposed by you know New York State about what we should be doing with flood safe construction. So I think that should. I mean. I, I, for my purpose, I think that should be part of it because I think just saying we're not going to have infill housing doesn't get us any safer. Doesn't get us. Doesn't make us any progress in how we can make our regulations stronger to prevent flooding. And we don't have to. We can go beyond what FEMA requires. And and you know, considering what happened in September, I think that's something we should be thinking about. Okay, Mr. Gottlieb, you want to say something? Uh, I'm all set. It was addressed by Mr. Spolzino. Great minds theory, huh? Yeah. Uh, anybody else from the board? So if we if we didn't do this, what would we do? What, Other do, you, than nothing? what do you mean by this? This this moratorium oh. and study. Uh, uh. This, I, what I, I guess from my perspective, I don't think we're studying enough. So, what, what, so what's the alternative? I think we need to think about, evaluate what kinds of regulations we can adopt, which we need to do before the moratorium ends. That's, you know, like, it's not, like, it's not that we just do a study and then we start adopting laws. So you want to adopt the laws before the moratorium's over so that people don't have a window to go back to the old ways. So if we decide to change, I think we need to think about our zoning code or, or, and make sure that we are including more rigorous controls for building within the flood zone. So the proposal is what? Just study our zoning code to make sure we're proposing more rigorous controls if we're gonna keep building in the flood zone. So while we while there's a moratorium, we'll study the zoning codes? Is that what would you prefer? I think it needs to be part of the scope of the moratorium. Dan, you have your hand up. Yeah. The, the proposal is a moratorium for infilled housing. That doesn't cover RM3, and it doesn't cover, for that matter, any of the other uh, uh, residential areas in the, you know, in the floodplain. Uh, I think it's hit, hit it on the head. We already know uh, the numbers of what could be built today. Uh, you know, today uh, subtracting what has already been built in that area. Um, and I'm expanding that area to be more than uh, C1, C2, and RM3. Uh, what I think what we really need is to, and I agree that this, with what Nora is actually trying to hit on, is what we have now doesn't work, even if we adopted it today. Mm -hmm. It won't work for RM3 because RM3 isn't, doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. So the issue is, you know, how do we, how do we improve our approach to what we, what our vision is, you know, for what should happen in the flood zone? I think that's really what it is, which boils down to the zoning code of what can and cannot be done. And uh, it boils down to what, what types of things we would prefer to encourage. And I'd like to see a more specific proposal mm -hmm. of a scope that addresses that. So, so, so that so that we don't so that we don't waste any time, okay. and we get some tangible results okay. Okay. that are that is that is really meaningful. Just I'm not suggesting that what was proposed was not meaningful, but it doesn't work the way it is. Okay, uh, let, let me just clarify a couple of things, uh, if I may. Can you hear me, Alamsey? Uh, you can come closer. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me just clarify a couple of things. At the last meeting at the suggestion of uh, Trustee Young, we included RM3 in a potential study for the moratorium. Uh, that, at that time, I thought was uh, a compromise that we had reached. Um, 
I was hoping uh, that Nora and I were going to talk with Mr. Desai and come up with parameters for a scope of work. But then, you know, th there were other invites issued to the meeting tonight, which made it apparent to me that this was going to be a wider shotgun approach. Uh, the reason that I proposed the C1, C2 moratorium uh, on infill housing originally was because I wanted something that would be effective quickly that would you know, take away potential dangers to our community. Uh, that doesn't mean that would be the only thing that would be done, but I can guarantee you from what I'm hearing tonight, uh, what will happen is a meandering uh, you know, uh, study and uh, you know, other things will be brought into it and we will be way down the road into 2023, 2024 before anything meaningful gets done, in my view. Uh, I would rather start picking things off one at a time. I think that this is, in my view, what happened with PLLC. Uh, I, I proposed that moratorium and I wanted uh, to work upon floor area ratios and lowering floor area ratios, but then it got much more complicated and you know much more Byzantine. And I didn't want that to happen here. Uh, so I just wanted to explain what my view was and, and why I wanted to approach this in a targeted systematic way. And we could just go from issue to issue to issue. Instead of trying this large scope that gets confused and convoluted and you know you get unintended consequences. But you know that, that that's my view. I know Trustee Tafour looks like he wants to say something. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, my main concern and first concern has been with your formulation of the moratorium, which is on, on the C1, C2, C2, C3 areas, just a study whether or not to eliminate infill housing. So it's just a question of eliminating infill housing. If, yeah. that's, if that's the board's, if that's your proposal, I think, that is a proposal for a new law, but proposing a moratorium to study and then do um, take, take time and spend some money doing some studies that we will look at them in a minute are going to just give us some information uh, that may or may not be relevant because the decision is whether or not to remove infill housing, which I think is not the right question here. The right question is how to change our, our laws in those areas so that construction can go up, residential or mixed, and be properly done. Now, of course it could be complicated, but it's overdue. And in order to not getting the, in, in the way of getting this without a clear scope and a timing, that's why I think we need to hear from the people who deal with this. So I, I actually welcome when, when the invitation was done uh, to, to the planning uh, chair and the people who work with her because they are dealing with the buildings that are being presented now and maybe they have some ideas to help us scope this properly. So I, as I said, to be very simple, without the right draft law in front of us, without the scope in front of us and without hearing if we're going the right direction, I think you should not go on this. And then just to finish this, I have nothing uh, to, to say of, of, um, of Neil's uh, capacities. I've been very happy to work with him. I've, I've worked with him co collaboratively. Uh, he's helping us with a comprehensive plan, but, but, the, but the proposal we have in front of us is to redevelop scenarios and fiscal socioeconomic impact assessments. That's task one. Task two is traffic impacts, and then a framework. That total has not been rounded up, but it's pretty significant. So what I'm saying is, and it's not his fault, but I just think this responds to the wrong formulation. So we are running in a circle here. So I think we should reopen what areas and what really to study, what needs to be fixed 
which is which is really the question, not whether to have a yes or a no. Okay, on, I, I on infant to... housing, but let, let's hear from others. I think we've heard. I, you know, I just, you have I just want to point something out that if you have a moratorium and in the moratorium, as you stated, you propose the law you want to pass, then it, it, it's a prejudice moratorium. And, and, and I think that would get you in trouble legally because how could you say that you're going to have a moratorium to do a study when you already have a law? Then, I, then if you respond, then I'll respond to you and then we can get to the others. I actually think precisely that's the problem, Mayor, that you're asking a question whether to just eliminate infill housing. Then yes. have a moratorium to that is, is, is I think it's the wrong, well, 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 what, what, what would that depend on? What would that depend on? That was the on, question. On traffic? Is that, does that depend on traffic? Well, if you're asking me a question, allow me to answer. That, that, let me finish. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just using the Socratic method. I'm not asking, I'm just, in general, you're asking the wrong questions. The oh, traffic and the redevelopment study. So it is not getting us anywhere. Okay. What, what is the end, end goal here? The I end goal to, should, should be to fix, to fix what needs to be fixed. Well, I just want to point out that nobody was asking any questions until I did this. Uh, if, no, Mayor, Mayor, let me let me just say no, that. No, no, Actually, no, no, some no. of these issues were done during 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 the moratorium. We did get I, into this. I let, and we, it was sidetracked. So let's hear from the experts and try no, to be we, constructive. We, we got sidetracked by apparently what's going on tonight. But I will propose a law without a moratorium, and we can discuss that law. But if if some of if if some of the people from planning want to say something, now is your opportunity. I'll begin, and then, and then I would like Ashley maybe to to step in. Um, I'm no expert, you know. I'm I'm, I'm a, uh, an urban planner, you know. Um, I've been on both sides of the table here. I understand the concerns, uh, having uh, gone through flooding, having uh, been involved on uh, elected side post flooding at the beginning of. It. Army Corps of Engineers study. Um, so I understand the need to uh, address the issues. However, um, we're not seeing a lot of applications for commercial development, okay? It's just not a demand. And if you look around at the existing commercial properties, not just in the village of Mamaroneck, but the entire region, there's, they're, they're empty or they're being converted to churches and personal training studios and um, schools, you, we just, you know, daycare centers. There's just not a big demand at this current time for commercial property. So if, if you're telling uh, property owners that you can't build housing, what will they be able to do with their, um, their property? So it, I, I see, I, I, I downloaded the, the, the attachment for this item today, and I see that the question basically is retaining uh, housing or nullifying the infill housing overlay. We currently have an application before us that's pending, okay? I, I, and we are doing CEQA on this application as a board with the help of our consultants. And we designed the building so that the emergency workers would not have to evacuate um, the building's residents. They're proposing a uh, fuel cells. They, there's a, a natural gas hookup already to the property so they don't have to worry about the moratorium on natural gas hookups. So they have hydrogen fuel cells uh, to generate power for the for the residents of the building uh, to be able to uh, shelter in place until the flood waters recede. If the uh, residents have to be evacuated, they have proposed a, uh, an evacuation method. Uh, it would have to be by boat, of course, from an upper floor, you know, with a, a balcony and an egress from an upper floor. We, we live in a flood zone. And with climate change, it's only going to get worse. The question 
I, th I think, and, and again, I'm not been involved in your other discussion, so I'm just reacting to what, I, what I'm hearing tonight. The question I think is, how do, how do we become more flood resilient? How do we change our laws to make all of our buildings, not just our residential buildings, but buildings that are gonna get flooded? How do, how, how do we move forward from here? Um, I, I, I understand the immediacy of the issue. I understand the need to go quickly with the issue. Um, the, the developer who's very far away from getting an approval, don't get me wrong, uh, you know, they're, they're requesting all sorts of things that involve other boards besides planning. Um, but they're, they're suggesting that their building could be a model for the community going forward. Um, and so I'm just reporting what they've said. I'm not giving you any, uh, you know, comment on whether I think it's good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just telling you what's going on. So, so uh, Ashley's been working with us on that. Um, and I mean, perhaps she would like to weigh in on, uh, again, you know, we're seeing in the, in the five years that I've been on the planning board or close to five years, four and a half years I've been on the planning board, I could probably count on one hand the number of commercial uh, applications we've had. They're just not, I mean, I don't know if you count a church as commercial, commercial property, but so I, I'm not sure uh, by saying no housing, then the question is then what? If there's no housing there, then what is there gonna be? And, and, and removing some of the uh, non-conforming housing, you know, the one and two and three family houses where there is no means of egress and there are no flood controls and there's nothing, and putting up a building that's more flood resilient and flood resistant um, might be, uh, you know, a way to go in the future. Um, but anyway, that 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 gives you kind of a context in which we're operating at this point in time, um, because we have to, because we're getting these applications before us, and we have to do something with them. Okay, so that's all I have to say. I just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, you know, daycare centers and training places are commercial establishments. You know, they, 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 they are commercial entities, you know, that, that is an appropriate commercial use. Uh, I understand what you're saying about the, the, what you're getting, the, uh, the applications you're getting. But you're getting that because apartment buildings are by far the most profitable uh, way to develop uh, for a developer. It, it's how they get the most money out of it. So. And I'm not saying that we should do that throughout the community. My, my, my question here is, is if it's wise as a community to be encouraging that kind of growth in a flood zone. Uh, and I, I know that you know, they're talking about uh, sheltering in place, but you know, if they have a heart attack while they're sheltering in place and it's, there's 14 feet of water, they're not making it. And, and, and that's just the facts. So I just, I just want to give this all some context and, you know, you know, developers say a lot of things when they're trying to get something done. I'm sure you know that. And uh, you, you've, you, your experience has shown you that. Uh, Ashley, do you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. So, so one of the things I would, I would build on is that there are a lot of buildings within these districts that are not flood safe today. They're, they're, they're clearly getting flooded and a lot of them are residential. So you have people who are living in ground floors, you have people who could be living in basement apartments. Um, and these are the, the types of buildings that could be replaced by infill residential development that could be made to be more flood resilient. So one of the things that I, I would recommend that the village board look at is, um, construction practices for flood safe buildings, um, flood mitigation practices, what can be, what can developers be required to do to mitigate future flooding? Um, and then another thing I think needs to be looked at is height exceptions to allow for the raising of structures for these existing houses that are within um, the floodplains. One of the things that happens now is that if you do have someone come in and try to replace a building and build it to the proper flood elevation, they are then up against the height restrictions within the zoning code, and then they have to go get a variance. 
And that just makes it much more difficult to replace existing non-conforming housing with something that would be conforming to the flood regulations. Ashley, are you saying that there are basement apartments in commercial zones right now? I'm saying there could be basement apartments in the R3 zoning district. Right, but, but that, that's that's okay. That's not what we're looking at. We're talking about the C1, C2. No okay, I, I thought R3 was being added because that is another RM, area that's in the flood zone. RM3. Okay, RM3. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gottlieb, do you have something to say? Uh, you know, the policy is certainly up to, um, you know, this board's determination, um, you know, so unless there's any specific legal questions as to what should be studied, um, I have no kind of policy guidance um, other than, you know, whatever the moratorium is enacted for, um, you know, is the endeavor that the board of trustees um, should explore during the moratorium period and whatever results from that, whether it's a local law related to construction or housing should be consistent with the language in the moratorium. I think we got that, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm curious, Ashley, what you would recommend listening down to what uh, all the views are that have been put out. What would you suggest if you were asked to do something? Um, I think the scope needs to be refocused to be more in line with the issues that prompted the moratorium in the first place, which is the flooding issue. Um, it does seem a, more like a generic analysis of the existing zoning and development potential within that district. Um, and I think it needs to have a greater focus and emphasis on, on flooding and flood mitigation measures. That's very interesting. Can I, I'm encouraged by what I heard Kathleen and Ashley say, and uh, I think those uh, items, the, um, the flood resilient construction, construction practices in the flood zone and height exceptions are certainly something that uh, would, could be included in the study uh, uh, if we have them uh, during the moratorium. Uh, that would make sense. And then including whether or not you do, you want to have infill housing at all. If you have it, then, then you do these things. I mean, th those are, those are questions we can, uh, we can approach. I well, mean, the uh, question is now is, well, we're going to have the moratorium. Uh, my, my, my brothers right now, yeah. um, since I proposed the moratorium, yeah. uh, if it's going to be this far reaching, I don't want to have a moratorium. I mean, we can just do the studies without a moratorium because I have absolutely no confidence that a six month moratorium would be long enough to study these extensive issues. Absolutely not. And I'm not gonna, you know, keep going back. So I'm fine with doing the studies and doing the work, but if, if, unless it's gonna be targeted and have some specificity, uh, I, I have no interest in it anymore. So, so what you're saying, Tom, is, is your infill housing, yes or no? Uh, no, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll worry about that uh, after I get through with this meeting tonight, okay. I have time to think about it. Uh, but you know, if, from my view, if, if this is gonna be this wide ranging, uh, studying the whole community for flood resilience, let me just finish. Yeah. Then you know, it, there's absolutely no way a, a reasonable person could expect that to be done in a six month period. Well, well, no, what, what, I'm, what I'm seeing here is we, we know the area, all right? And, and, and we know what we're talking about for, um, uh, for um, residential housing that's been proposed. Uh, and, 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 and we, we may, may pause it uh, while we while we while we think about it, and the questions could be: Do we even want to have infill housing? And if we do, um, then it's got to be more flood resilient. Then it's got to ha have these other parameters. I don't think the, these are going to be hard. We're, we're going to require a lot of study. I have been down this road before. Right? Yeah, and it, there's no way. In my in my view, you know, you, you, I'm the only member of the board maybe who feels that way. But in my view, it, it's not going to be a six month study. It's just not. Can, can I? Yeah, please. Okay, so I, I didn't think it was going to be a six month study when it first got discussed. So I mean, I think well, that there were, it was going to be extended. So that was I'm I'm with you. You know, the so more our more fire. fire. Let's let's get moving. Hello. Let me just finish. So our, we had a moratorium. It was fifteen months, Bob. We had to extend it for an extra like two months to get that final law passed. 
one a big problem with that moratorium was we adopted the moratorium before we adopted a scope of work and it took a couple of months before we had any plan of what we were going to do so we're going to be ahead of the game because we'll adopt a scope if we adopt a moratorium we'll adopt a scope at the same time but um, and, and a lot of the work has been done because this is the same area that got studied. So we have some documentation. Um, I, I'm, I still have two questions. A global question is, Victor's talked a lot about um, some of the model ordinances that the state has adopted for resiliency, a whole packet of them. And then I think we are coming up on some deadlines for when we are supposed to be modifying our code to in incorporate that. So that might be something that we need to look at and that might give us a leg up but number two, I'm still not understanding how we can just say infill housing, yes, infill housing, no, in a vacuum without thinking about how we build everything in the flood zone. So that's the part of it that I just, that, that I just don't see. So, you know, I think we need to evaluate this, whether or not we do a moratorium, I'm with Tom, we need to evaluate how we can make our community more resilient. I think, I know Dan agrees with that. Victor's been advocating for that for a long time and lose on board. We have to make our community more resilient. And I think we aren't, we responsibly can't say there's absolutely no more development because A, I think we can't take property rights and B, um, sometimes development makes properties more flood resistant as Ashley has pointed out. So I think we're, we're kind of at a point where we're doing something good. And I think we should just, Keep well, figuring it out. I'll have to say, I don't see anything happening. I don't, I, I think a six month moratorium uh, lights a fire, puts a, puts a limit on it and, yeah. and, 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 uh, and, and, and gets us moving. I mean, because uh, that's, you know, movement and action have not been the strength of the community uh, up to this point. So let's, let's just, let, I, I'll support the moratorium because it, it puts a time limit. It starts the clock and we got to get it done. And we right. got to get it done because we got to get it done. Right. That's our job. You know. With all due respect, that's like telling the Army Corps to hurry up and finish their project in a year. There is a, this is a process and there are, there's, there's time involved, there's research involved, there's legal requirements for adopting laws. So just lighting a fire and saying we're going to do something in six months isn't isn't realistic. Okay, I, I guess. So my, my question. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you're newcomers. I still. I'm still. I'm so sorry. I apologize. I have a question. So the question I have for you is: I don't understand how we say yes, no to infill housing. How that gets us anywhere towards a more flood resilient community, or well, gets us to okay. a goal. And Good then my question, question for for what, Bob and Charles what, and let Ashley. Let me ask my question, okay. and I'll let you go back because you, you did ask it of me. Uh, we it, it doesn't. It isn't the panacea to get us to a more flood resistant community. That wasn't the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal was whether we should be putting more people in what we know to be harm's way. And as long as we're allowing infill housing in a flood zone, we are allowing and putting purposefully more people in harm's way. That is a simple, I think, uh, you know, fact. Uh, the more we build, in areas that we know are gonna flood large apartment buildings, the more dangerous it becomes. And the more, you know, it's just like, you know, it, it's a, they, what does the military call it? You know, our targets of opportunity. We are putting more targets of opportunity uh, in, into the flood zone to get potentially hurt, get potentially damaged. And uh, th that was my concern. Uh, after seeing the horrific flooding on September 1st and September 2nd and seeing what it did, to areas in the flood zone, I, I, I thought to myself, how could you reasonably want to put more people down here? And that in and of itself was the whole question. But, and okay. that doesn't mean that you can't look at making things more resilient. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't look, not look at your code, but to say, I have to do all that before I fix this problem. To me, you know, it, it just delays fixing that particular problem that I identified. Uh, and that's my answer and to that question. So I think in order to fix that particular problem, you adopt a law that says there's no infill housing in the flood zone. I don't think okay, that, then, then I'll no, 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 no. I don't think that the study gives us information to maybe this is what it, maybe I don't think that this what we're talking about studying 
gives us information to make that decision because the decision is really a binary one. Do we have, want housing or do we not want housing? And it's not about impact or lack of impact on schools or taxes or property. Okay, can, I, can I just make a prediction that when I propose that law to remove infill housing, members of this board are going to say, I don't have enough information. I, I don't know. I mean, okay. I, well, this, that's, that's, that's a question for Bob. Is that, can we, is that, I mean, you know, when, you know, the, the law was changed in 1981 to allow housing in the commercial zone. And that, you know, provided development opportunities for many developers. Um, if we take those development opportunities away. In the flood zone. In the flood zone, well, it was in the flood zone. Is that um, putting the village at risk for anything else? Well, I think I've said before, there are two constraints on those kinds of decisions, right? One is there has to be a rational basis for doing it. Mm -hmm. The second is you have to not take away all of the value of the property. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, don't, I can't speak to the facts, but I, I suspect that there is some value of the property as commercial without infill housing. Um, mm -hmm. But I can't, you know, I'm not an expert on that. I think it comes back to what I think we're hearing is we don't want to people put in, we don't want to put more people in harm's way, which I think we all agree with. I don't think yeah. that, that that's the issue. The yeah. issue is how you do it uh, and how do, you be, how do you make it more resilient? Um, and that's what, the, that's what this is all about. And maybe, maybe we, you know, the moratorium, as you say, is six months means you actually only have three and a half to at most four months to do anything and then try and you know, massage it and get it to you know, uh, adopt it or not adopt it in the remaining, the remaining time. Um, I think what we probably need is to do, you know, we, don't, we don't have a real, with all due respects to what Neil has prepared, he's prepared a proposal of scope based upon what he's been told to do you know, to date. I'm not sure that that scope is what we need to be focused on. The real focus on, I think, uh, and I think Ashley has talked about it and we touched on it, is how do we make it more resilient? How do, how do we try and keep people out of harm's way, not run afoul of um, uh, legal, legal, complications, I'll leave it at that. Um, and, how, and how do we uh, change or massage our laws to encourage that and to make it, to make it a reality? That's what we should be doing. Um, you know, uh, I would not adopt any moratorium without a detailed scope. Um, and I don't think we have the right scope at this point. I think that's, that's, where we, that's really where we are. And resiliency is the main issue. I think part of okay, you, you know how I'm not going to. Yeah, it seems like it seems like uh, I, I, nothing's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to uh, propose a law excising infill housing in a flood zone, and we'll see where that goes. It doesn't need a moratorium. I thought it did. I, I think it does, and I think it, it, there there are questions that need to be studied about it, and I was hoping to do that. But you know, uh, then you know, other folks can propose another moratorium. Uh, which is more out, out, outflowing, and I'll, I'll decide how I want to deal with that when the time comes. But you know, at least this has sparked a, a discussion, uh, and we're we're off the dime. Vic, you got your hand up. Yes, I I, I think aside from what you're going to your move, I think we should have move forward with scoping very detailed how to upgrade our regulations. And maybe even with a timeline. Well, okay. And, 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 and let's have uh, Ashley give it a go and well, review well, it at a, a, in two weeks because we, no, we, wait, we wait, need wait. to be, this is overdue. I think this I, is the I, right time. I think to, the, board, the board should give Ashley directives. Uh, if, if a couple of you want to give Ashley directive, give her directive on where you want to go. 
or else it's, we're going to be back to, oh, that's not what we wanted. So why don't you take the time to uh, write out, you know, what you think is an appropriate for Ashley to study? Because I, I don't want to be back here in two weeks saying, no, that's no. not it. I think it's exactly what she said today. I don't want to go beyond that. Okay. I, I, I think we all agree that we have a problem of putting more people in harm's way. So the question is, how do we make the, how do we review and update our laws to make the village more, uh, more resilient, more flood resistant in a way that does not put people in harm's way uh, in the most meaningful way that we can. And that, that to me would be quote, the broad one sentence scope. And that's what I'd like to see a detail on, you know, of how to approach that. Is that something Ashley you could do or not? Or, or feel comfortable doing or not based on this discussion? Uh, why, is Ashley, why is Ashley doing it and not I'm, me? I'm just asking a question. Uh, what about, I have a question about what, why is yeah, Ashley doing it. still there. She said she was getting off at six. Yeah, I, I'm still here, but I do need to drop off to head to another meeting. Um, if it's the board's directive to prepare a proposal or a scope of work, I'm, I'm happy to do so, or I'm happy to provide comments to Hardesty and Hanover for them to continue with their scope of work. Uh, I'm comfortable doing that. Anybody else feel that way? Yeah, I mean, I, I well, am. I, I, I'm sorry. We, we, we've uh, been we've been working with Neil this whole time, and now all of a sudden we're, we're shifting gears to Ashley. I think the distinction. May I? Yeah. I think the distinction, and we're working with Neil on the comp plan, and maybe this is going to require fine tuning there. The reason why probably Ashley is here, and the reason I I I see it is because she or she she's part of the consulting village planner so she's dealing with this day in day out so probably she's in the best position to scope this up if, if then we can tie it into something else nick and neil and his firm is doing that's different but day in day out they deal with this and i think she's been working and they've been working with the village for over two two plus years so that's they have enough information on okay. the issues they've been through the flooding problem they've now seen this new so they they probably are in the best position to give us that very focused uh approach and hope maybe maybe give us a timeline that is going to be as speedy as possible in a realistic way because land use zoning is going to be tough but we know we're facing this is the major the major legislative issue i think for this board and and for us that we if, if we start Upgrading our code, I think, is the best thing we can do for a village. So let's yep. let's get cracking. Then, then what we need from her is, you know, a proposal. Because I'm not going to do this open ended. We no. we we ask for proposals uh, from Mr. Desai. We should ask for a proposal from Ashley. Ashley had to drop off. Okay. Well, uh, up then the village yeah, manager. So. Um, uh, uh, you know, we can get her that message. Um, yeah, yeah, no, we, we can handle getting a message. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Jerry, uh, can you get, I'm not a part of this. You're not. Could you get this? I, get that from Ashley? Yeah, I'll take care of it. But I also want to say that Neil has been working with us for a little yeah. while now, has put some significant time in multiple yeah. proposals for us. Yeah. So Neil, Neil has his hand up. Yeah, Neil, go ahead. There you go. You know, uh, you know, I mean, uh, this is recorded so my bosses could see this, but, you know, we're, we're, we have the comp plan update, you know, that's, that's a, and I'm meeting with Robert uh, and your, your, your communications officer tomorrow to start talking about how we launch this. So, um, you know, I'm working on the comp plan update and to the extent that this assignment, I, 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 I understand why you would ask Ashley, um, I guess, you know, whoever does it, uh, uh, you know, it, whether it's you know if if she would like to have some if if she if if she would like to ask me for some input that's I'm happy to do that um, you know so I don't I don't have any um, you know I appreciate you know you're you're um, you know recognizing that I had been working on this proposal for a while but as if she is the consulting village planner uh, and in in form I think um, that is part of a role um, and you know 
we can we can work something out um you know if if we can we could at least at least provide some input into the proposal but you know i do have the conference plan up comprehensive update which uh has a fairly quick timeline and so uh, uh that's really important for me to move that along mm -hmm. mr young has a question okay um uh Perhaps as a relative newcomer, perhaps somebody could explain how in God's name this is only coming up now. What do you mean? Well, the idea of resilient housing in, in the floodplain. I mean, uh, I mean, how is why is why is it now is coming up? Because I proposed more turn. All right, so so this this is the impetus, right? No, he's talking about you you're going back we to just, what we're, we're just giving Ashley a, 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 an assignment here to come up with resilient housing. It hasn't come up, this hasn't come up before. It has come up before. All it right. has come up before. And what has happened with it? Nothing has happened with it. Thank you. Everything keeps... the finish is I'll tell you why. Because we are, the state has been developing some model laws, and I'm hoping that we're going to be getting those model laws. I think that we probably need to be working with our land use lawyer and our village attorney on adopting these kinds of laws. And I will say that a lot of things got sidetracked because of the pandemic, many, many things, including the comp plan. And I think if the comp plan had been finished in a timely fashion, which it wasn't, it was delayed because of this last moratorium, which was Tom's initiative, we would have been in much better shape because resiliency is part of the comp plan. Right. So that's, I think really jumping ahead to things doesn't necessarily get us it just it gets us around the board, but it doesn't get us ahead in the game of, of right. Jesus. Okay. So do, it, I, there's, and I don't Victor's think we should be blaming people. I think we should just be well, moving I, forward. I want to see something happen. That's all. Victor's got his hand up. Yes, I was going to say precisely that. Just just move forward. Yeah. This yeah. this is very important issue got sidetracked or not sidetracked, got uh, in a way they pushed to a side because of the moratorium. Actually, I pushed a lot. For the for the, all this plan, so all, all the maps to have have the have the floodplain all built on and to consider a little bit of, of this issue, or at least to avoid building large structures on the, on the floodplain. And the, but we didn't get to the, another the other level. So at this point, and actually the comp plan is the one that supports all the other changes. So just let's get cracking with both sides of it. Finish the comp plan, which okay. Neil Neil sure. did. Uh, all the sustainability, the flooding chapter is amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's get this done, and that will support a lot of the other work. But you cannot wait for one to finish. I think you should move with with the other updates and scope right away. I think we'll right. sync. So, Jerry, can you get us uh, a scope of work proposal from Ashley? Sure, Mayor. Uh, Ashley and I speak twice twice a week, three times a week, and we meet once a week. So I have no problem working uh, with Ashley. We work very closely together. We need to take a vote or no, anything? Just, no, we, we, we vote when a proposal comes Got it. As far as for, for Neil, Mayor, he spent a lot of time preparing yes. his quotes. I, I think there's, I, I, you know, unless he wants to tell us they're free quotes, uh, he spent a lot of time preparing these. And we've had conversations and phone calls, and he's attended meetings. He should present a bill. Yeah, that I'll sign off on. So this is going to cost us more money. Neil's raising his hand. Yeah. Neil, I mean, yeah, I appreciate. Like I said, I appreciate that 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 recognition. Um, um, uh, yeah, I think what you know. Let's just you know, I, I guess if the you know if the board is clear what they that they want to go in in the direction of a flood resilience ordinance then um you know um i could i could say it's 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 fine i mean i, I sat in on some of these meetings just just to get more information for the comp plan so um you know i, I could send a small invoice for some of my time uh i could do that but uh um, yeah thank you neil sure you're a gentleman thank you all right so few of us left. <laughs> uh, transfer station, roof project, and solar panels at 310 and 313 Fayette. 1A. Um, Mayor, Mr. Sarnoff uh, this week had a meeting uh, regarding the solar panels and all of our DPW buildings, and he'll be able to explain a little bit more about um, the fact that we, it looks like we have a green light to, to move forward, but he'll tell you that. 
So it was a part of a larger conversation that evolved out of talking about solar panels at Taylor's Lane. Um, if we're going to look at one site, it may be uh, advantageous to look at the public work site as well because uh, some of the more limiting factors at Taylor's Lane, you may need to leverage some of the uh, benefits of the DPW site as closer, it most likely closer to the connection sites, to the development of that site easier. Which would help uh, build the business case for Taylor's Lane. So we had a meeting, uh, myself, Jerry attended, uh, Elm Silver from the Committee for the Environment. Uh, we met with one of our uh, consultants from a company called Bella. They're the ones helping us with the closing of the Taylor's Lane site. Uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, employees of Bella is formerly uh, a director of facilities in the city of Rochester. And he uh, implemented solar at a number of sites that the city of Rochester owns. Uh, he was going to follow up with me, give me some uh, examples of RFPs from ICERTA and other RFPs that are out there uh, that look at the various types of uh, setups that you can have, whether it be a community solar project or a project where we provide power to our own buildings. Uh, but uh, as an example, I'm waiting to see those RFPs. Uh, we mentioned that the Dignity the, the Serta RFP is a, a very thorough quality RFP, mm -hmm. and that he wished they had something like that when he was in the city of Rochester because it would have saved him about 12 months of his career uh, in developing and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, as far as the, the process, uh, if we do have this role of an RFP, uh, uh, solar developers would look at the site. Uh, they would uh, do kind of like a back of the envelope interconnection study. I'm talking about Taylor's Lane now? Well, both, both sides. Okay. Uh, and that, you know, they would make a proposal based on that. Uh, if the board awards a contract or some sort of agreement, uh, then they would do a formal interconnection study to uh, help develop the business case and the, uh, the model form. But, uh, you know, we are. Uh, looking into it, we are looking at both sites. Uh, you know, we would have to do the roof first, and then mm -hmm. you, know, you would do the solar as, as right later on. We would have to move there. Uh, but, uh, you know, just wait for the RFP. Uh, we can share that with the board when I get to take a look at it. You know, kind of discuss the next steps, whether in concept you want to move forward with looking at the solar development of these two sites. And then, um, realistically, uh, do we have an idea how much uh, electric power we could generate at Taylor's Lane, given the size there? I mean, it's not huge. Um, so it depends on a couple of factors. Uh, the first would be, you know, are there going to be setbacks? You know, how, how would you want the process to go? Um, you know, all things being equal, uh, the person I spoke with thought maybe you could do a megawatt at uh, uh, at Taylor's Lane. Dan, just for the folks watching at home and the people on this board, <laughs> can you explain what a megawatt is? Uh, it's be 1,000 watts, but it's basically, you know, uh, a megawatt can probably provide power to about 500 residential customers. Uh, wow. so. Yeah, it's significant. Yeah, it's significant. Yeah. Yeah, it's still, that was a number that was bandied about. I, I, I would have no way of being able to confirm that until you know, some other decisions are made. Can, I, I think that um, the Taylor Lane site is has been discussed by a lot of different community organizations as a possibility for a lot of different recreational opportunities. Yeah, so I think um, we probably ought to run this by the boards and commissions who are involved with that. I guess the Rec and Parks Commission. Well, we, we could do that. I mean, it's been done in the past, so mm -hmm. this is the board asked us to contact the community for the environment, yeah. asked us to contact uh, Parks and Recreation Commission. And shockingly, the, the boards and committees advocated for purposes consistent with their boards and committees. Right, but I think that that pe there has been sort of um, an, an anticipation by a lot of people that this was going to be a community decision about what happened with Taylor Lane. And so I think if we're really going down the path of having this, which, and it's a low rise. It's not really, it's not like you see it like above a parking lot. It's a low rise array, solar array. 
and we could have a walking path and whatever around it. I think maybe some conceptuals would be beneficial than waiting till the very end. I don't think we should get too far down this path. I think we need to get buy-in from people before we do it. And the, uh, the, the from what I understand it, there's an issue about how much uh, traffic the the cap can can tolerate. Am I correct? So the as far as the cap itself, yeah. I think what I mentioned to the board is uh, this type of reuse seems to be something that's favored by the DEC because uh, development of uh, solar or a solar sites on former gravel field sites less than 25 acres is a type two action. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there's an incentive. So say that again. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Yeah, so uh, just say it again. Of, so, I can... so the development of solar sites on former ground field sites less than 25 acres in size is a type two action under CEQA. Yeah. <laughs> so it, the, 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 the environmental process is greatly facilitated. Yeah. Whereas building a baseball field might not be. Um, yeah, I mean, you can right. have more traffic than a concern. Right. Than that. <laughs> um, what, uh, in terms of, you know, how often it would need to be, you know, accessed or maintained by someone managing the actual mm -hmm. solar arrays, mm -hmm. uh, what I was told, you know, maybe half a dozen times a year, um, and, you know, you a uh, pollinator bar and things like that. Yeah. Um, I, I think what you may want to do, if you want to look at, um, you know, developing, schematics. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know we have the ability to do that ourselves. Uh, you know, I don't even mean that. I mean, like a picture of something that's similar, just to okay. give people a visual. They of, exist, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying we just, I think we need to manage expectations because yeah. expectations are pretty high yeah. and this might, people might question it. Just following up on what Nora said, um, I think it's a great idea I'm in favor of RFPs uh, so that we can get something. I would include visuals as part of the RFP. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. But, but, I, but we also have promised the other, other user groups that they would be included in you know, what decision was being made and we would talk with them when we got to that point. We're at that point. I think we need to share that with them. Uh, because I, I don't want people just to think that you know, they, they've been left out and they're not being considered. That's fair. Or we could do something uh, simple as, you know, if we get like a questionnaire for the commissions and committees to respond to specifically about the reuse sure. of the Taylor's land site. And could you include in that uh, just how much uh, revenue you would expect uh, this to generate for the village and uh, its effect on taxes? Uh, I, I could. I mean, yeah. it's it's... It'll be a little bit of uh, uh, prognostication. Of sure, the sure, but it, it, it's 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 a it, it's it's an alternate revenue stream that would uh, um, relieve pressure on property taxes. And that's one of the business. Yes, you do some good prognostication. I've been around some real prognosticators in my life. No, uh, I, well, you I, try to be accurate. I try to be accurate. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I try. I try to avoid that because I like I like my money the way it is. Hi. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Uh, social media policy. I think I, we were, I don't, weren't we going to do some more research on it? So I don't, I mean, there's no more, and I haven't done more research on it. All right. So, uh, just to, to let folks know, we have a lot of stuff that are on for the June 13th yeah. meeting that we got to get to before, and one thing on for regular meeting about Hurricane Ida. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, planning board comments on tree law. So, and we have executive session. Right. Uh, do you want me to do that? Yeah, please do. So the the planning board has made just you know a few comments, and I guess Bob's gone over them just to make sure that this law is harmonized with other laws. That's correct. So there's not. I, I reviewed them. Yes. Yeah. And so, G and so and you and so you've redrafted this law to incorporate them. Or someone has so um it's kind of i mean it's not a big deal right it's just making sure that everything it is <laughs> was there any substantive changes let's do it that way Are there any substantive changes? yes yes i'm not it did me a little while to go through it i have to go back over them it's been a while since i prepared this 
Well, then do we want to do that in two weeks? I think it's, yeah, do you want to, do you want to do it in two weeks then? Yeah, I think that would be and, good. And then there was one other change about if a tree falls, um, <laughs> tree no, falls. No yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then was there here? Did it really fall? And just that that would also be included. You need to take a picture. Is this law? Does this law answer that this question? Law, this law answers <laughs> that question now. And if, if, if a tree falls in the village of Mamaroneck, you have to take a picture of it and get a permit to remove it. Or, or you can remove it on an emergency basis, but you have to take a picture because that wasn't clear. So that was one thing that got added afterwards at the le at the tree committee's last meeting. Well, you flip it, but if you don't take a picture, what do you do? Just leave it there? Well, I think the point is if you're gonna you, you have to get the permit at, retroactively, you know, you can take you can get rid of it, but you it, you know if a tree falls if there's an emergency, you can remove the tree and apply for the permit within three trees days. Trees blocking your driveway. Right. Tree falls is blocking your driveway. It's a Friday. You got you want to get out of your house. Bob doesn't want to remember this. It was 21 versions. <laughs> Question is, if a tree falls in your property, it's not an emergency. Yeah. And you don't do anything about it. Is the village going to prosecute you for that? No, you don't have to do anything about it. But if you do do something about it and remove it, you have to retroactively pay the $25, get the permit, and show a picture. So Just the take away the tree that's lying on your property. Mm -hmm. you, remove, you have to get a permit then to remove the tree that's lying on your property that fell, even though you had nothing to do. Okay. No, I understand. It's a retroactive. Okay. Wow. I got to tell you, as a, as a former owner of 13 large trees, well, it's, uh, yeah. if the tree hadn't fallen, you would need a permit to remove it. So the idea is that people that that, that no one causes a tree to causes a tree to fall and then just remove. Is it. the responsibility of the of the people, the arborists, and the people you call to remove it, or is it the, the responsibility of the homeowner, the property owner, or the arborist? You can do it either way. The way we drafted this initially is. If you cause it, mm -hmm. you're violating the law. I yes. But if it falls because it just fell, right? You still want that. Order I guess. Yeah. I guess the question was was discussed. This is the last tree committee. Is that if a tree, you might not know if someone caused it to fall or not, and that's why you want to have a picture of it before it gets removed. That's all. My my question with to that was just one word in particular. Uh, remove any tree that has fallen down or been uprooted due to the events that are not the result of human intervention. Intervention has, you know, it, so, it has various meanings. How, how about human actions? I mean, why intervention? Hold that thought. And I'm not sure, Tom, if that's the, if that's the language that the tree committee recommended that, next That's time. what I have here. From the tree committee? Yeah. Okay. But uh, you have it in the it's law. It's on page though. two. Under three. You know why it's intervention, Bob? Is it, maybe I'm missing something. There was a, I think there's something missing here. The tree committee had come there up with so many changes to this law. It's very hard for me to keep up with it. But if we talk about it and we're we, both ready. And, for, and for let's two make weeks sure this now. is the right one. Yeah. Because the, the one I have in front of me. So we don't get to version five. Okay. Is tree law version one, 2022. It was, we're starting again. 420. Oh. Here's why we did that, because this is going to be a separate local law than the old tree okay. law. So it's not a new version of the old okay, law. Okay, so the one I have in front of me is version one. And on page two, in, 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 on page two, uh, in, the, in bold type, it says not the result of human intervention, which Okay. To me, is a vague word that. Uh, you so know, you, you're, pro you're okay. I'm proposing actions, okay. you know, just because it's more easily understood and less uh, fungible. Okay. Yeah. I'm writing that down. Okay. Okay. I hope Mark is there. Just to be clear, this is version one of Tree Law Two. <laughs> version one of Tree Law Two. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a clear. Okay. Mark. Uh, there's two we want to do before we have to do the ones we have. Three more, three more the sequel. <laughs> Friday the 13th, uh, 13. Uh, relocation of volunteer firehouse. There's no backup here, Lutus, or something mm -hmm. you wanted to talk about? Um, wow, March 28th. <laughs> 2002, that's before I was here. Um, 2002, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it probably true. did come up in 2002. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, 
the volunteer fire house is in the flood zone. And when it floods, um, they have to leave. And that's when they're probably needed most. It seems like a, a, a bad spot for a firehouse. I think they're just, get, Jerry, am I right? They're just getting back in there now? The door went back in. Other than that, the interior needs to be re <clears throat> rebuilt. And what we're doing is we're flood proofing a building that is going to get flooded again. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 uh, I don't know. It, it, I, I live right there. I, 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 and I don't understand how when an emergency happens, the emergency guys have to leave and, and work, work from under a bridge up the, yeah. up the it just doesn't yeah, seem, I, seem to make any sense. I understand they like the, the firehouse, but we should be thinking about some, another plan. I'm, I'm going to be a fire council this week and I'll, I'll, I will bring it up. Uh, and if I make it back to the next meeting. I, I, you know, and I know I've talked to the chief about it. I mean, they, they like the firehouse, but I mean, yeah. I'm sure if we got them an, a, a new one, they, would, they wouldn't complain. Yeah. Well, you know what, in, in 2007, uh, they were pointed out and we raised a lot of stuff and put stuff upstairs and opened it up again. And it, it went past that this time. Yeah, I mean, they got to be able to do their yeah. job. They got to be able to yeah. function. We can't make them uh, victims of, of, of a disaster and ask them to help us. Yeah, and then, and then they're, they're, they're actually, you know, they're, they're the uh, third wheel of this firehouse. Uh, they, they've been, you know, uh, guests of volunteers in Mamaro. Uh, and, and we need, and, and, and there's only two kitchens. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we need a firehouse on that side of the, of the, uh, the rip, oh, the yeah, we definitely need a firehouse out, yeah, yeah. especially because that, that's probably so, uh, some of our older construction in the least. Uh, just bringing it up, okay. Uh, Mamaronek Reservoir Dam, Jerry. The proposal that came in from our previous engineer, GH or GBH, um, was provided to the board. When I first received it, um, it's a proposal to address the issues uh, that we have been notified three times by the DEC uh, for having deficiencies. 23 page proposal, I think it's 94,000 and change. It's up to the board whether they want to fund it and move forward or not. Say, say that again. How much is the proposal? 94,200, I believe. Has this been shared with uh, Westchester West Joint Waterworks? Yes, it has. The same day I shared it with you. Um, so I, I've read the proposal and I think it is a very interesting proposal and addresses a lot of things. What it doesn't do is address the issues of long-term pro and con uh, of what to do with the dam give some insight as to immediacies, but not where, which way to go. I also am concerned that the dam is actually owned by Westchester Joint Waterworks. Um, and this is something that they should be doing. And I'm delighted that you know, you, you know partner with them on that. And I think your, um, the, uh, your leadership in trying to get something moving is very important. But this is something that they should be doing. They also have been cited uh, by the DEC. They should be doing, DEC was very clear that we should be doing the maintenance on it. But do you want me to tell them that the water work should be doing it? it, it what do you want me to tell the DEC? Because I have to resolve violations that may now go into a fourth notification. Just tell me what you want me to do. I'm trying to. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think that this is something that the joint, the Westchester Joint Waterworks is, has to be involved with and taking the lead on. And why we have a responsibility, why we have a responsibility for some of the maintenance, I don't believe that we are responsible financially or otherwise for uh, a lot of the things that they are addressing, which I have much more implication in terms of whether what we're going to do with the dam, which is really what we need to come to grips with. And that's why I raised this issue months ago. Um, and I think it's important that we move forward on it. Um, I don't have a problem with anything that has been done. I think, however, that this is something that 
uh, the, the Westchester Joint Water Works as the owner is required to do. The um, emergency plan is by, by DEC regulations published is their responsibility. Um, so these are the types of things that I think working together makes a much better approach to life. If my question is this, what in the proposal do you think is the responsibility of Westchester Joint Water Works? You, you've given no specifics. I just gave you one. But th th that, that's, th that's not in the scope of work. Well, I, I believe it is. Bob, what do you think? You, you've looked at the agreement between the village and the Westchester Joint Water Works. My first reaction to that, Mayor, is I'd prefer to discuss that with you in an advice of council session. But if the board wants me to discuss it publicly, I will. Let's let's wait on that. Okay. I, I'd like input from the, the attorney on that. Well, can we do that now or do we do that when we do the executive session, which is coming up any minute now? Well, we, we do that when we do the executive session, but I, I, I think that we should move forward with the proposal and get the work done. You know, we have been supposed to be maintaining this since 1977. And you know, I, 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 I wonder if anybody can point to us doing our job effectively since 1977. Um, that's not the question. No, that's the question no, I posed. There, there's no question the village has shirked its responsibility Dan, in doing Dan, it. It's the question that I proposed. I, uh, and I just wanted the answer to that question. I gave you an answer to that question. No, you, you, don't, you don't happen to like the answer and that's fine. I understand that and I respect your views. No, uh, Dan, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, that's your view. I think I do. It's fine, that, may I ask, it's my understanding the dam wouldn't be there if we hadn't insisted on keeping it there at some point. Am I correct? That is my understanding. Yes, so, so, uh, the, the, so, the, so to ask the waterworks to put money into it now on a dam that they wanted to take down in 1977 uh, seems like a stretch, and, and, and Dan. If, and if we, seems if like a stretch. Has to, then, then they should. But, you know, mm -hmm. this is, I know, something that was originally brought up by Ms. McCrory uh, in a lengthy email to us. And, uh, you know, I just want to make, I, 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 once Ms. again, McCrory, wait, 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 she? I, I want to make sure that we're getting something done. And you know, there's been a lot of stuff discussed tonight and almost every initiative there have been roadblocks put in the way. You know, the, the people of this community expect that dam to be properly maintained, expect that dam to you know, not uh, be clogged, not to have issues. And Jerry's proposal, which he was originally gonna do on the emergency order, uh, which I think he should have done an emergency order, frankly, uh, it, it is you know not going to get done unless we do it. I, th there, I disagree with you. We can get it done. The Westchester Joint Waterworks can get it done. So it's not a question of you know trying to put things off. It's trying to put a meaningful path forward that does not expose the, the village taxpayers to a larger problem that it shouldn't be theirs. There are when you own an asset, you have a uh, a fiduciary and uh, responsibility. You can't shirk that. Uh, whether okay. whether or not the, the, historic, you, let me opinions. finish, please, You're John. giving legal Tom, opinions, just I'm sure for, was for you know, once, formulated just by be, your friends just be really, Corey. really nice and uh, let people finish. No, Dan, no, you offer legal it, opinions you're, and, Just and because you're, you're you have an opinion once again. that may differ from mine, doesn't mean that you have the right to keep interrupting. No, Dan, I'm and just you saying, don't you're have the right to do that, Tom. You're not, you're not, it's against you're all not qualified it's, it's to against do. common courtesy, not to mention our rules. Dan, just be go care, ahead. Just be, be careful, you know. Be just, careful of what? You be careful of what? You're trying to you just are being bullied. That's I'm all you're doing. I'm not bullying you, Dan. I'm just trying to keep you on focus so we can get I am on done. focus. No, don't, I'm don't not yell, on your focus, but I am on my focus. Don't yell. I'm just trying to get things done around here, which hasn't been happening. The focus is to slow everything down. This to could do have been, this could have been do, started already. To do things right is important. Yeah. And there's absolutely no question about that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this in executive session. Vice or, or vice council. council. Okay, we gotta get some stuff done here.
uh, capital purchase uh, for front end loading. Uh, Mayor, if I could, uh, we're replacing a 2001 front end loader with 8,583 miles on it, which equates to 515,000 miles if this was a car driving on the street. Um, we had estimated in 2019, the replacement would be somewhere around 185. We're approximately at, uh, we're at 270, just over $270,000, partly because um, we're asking for a $6,400 warranty. Um, we have a $13,000 delivery fee, as well as a $19,000 uh, 12 foot plow for this vehicle, uh, for this piece of equipment so that we can plow the roads that we're required to plow for the, uh, the, the, the contracts that we have with uh, various uh, governmental entities. Do we have any questions, concerns about buying the uh, piece of equipment? None? Everybody's okay for putting this on for the regular meeting of uh, June 13th? Yep. yep, we budgeted for it. We so. budgeted for it. Thank Love you very it. much. Uh, 2C is real easy. St. Patrick's Day Parade, March 19th. Rain out day, March 26th. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Schlancha. <laughs> well, Jerry, you know what that means? No, I don't know what it means, but I know. <laughs> he knows what language it is. I know what language it is. <laughs> and the language is called Irish. Don't, don't call it Gaelic. Gaelic. Yeah. Irish. Right, yeah. Uh, Garlic. I, item 2D. Expanding a no parking restriction on Drury Drive. Do you know, do you know who's from Drury Lane? Muffin Man, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Originally from the mayor. Muffin Man. Uh, this came from Traffic Commission, I believe, Mayor. Okay, yeah. anybody have a chance to look at it? Yeah. Yep. Any questions or concerns? No. Pretty simple. There's two. Yeah, there's one on Knollwood. This is from uh, Knollwood to Drury, and mm -hmm. the other one is from uh, Stewart. It's Stewart Avenue on Stewart the Avenue. It's, it's all about sidelines. Yeah, it's all about sidelines. Accident yeah. there last last weekend. Yeah. Or, yeah. Last weekend. I think so. It's a terrible intersection. I agree. Okay. Uh, it's a terrible intersection, even if you're going straight through it. So is everybody fine with putting that on? We could try and get that done. Yeah. Thank you to our traffic committee. Yeah. Uh, West Sister Joint Waterworks, a joint capital project to remediate uh, compromised slopes at the site of the purchase uh, water storage tank. Dan, you want to talk about this? Or want me to talk about this? Okay. Uh, the work they're doing around the water tank, uh, they have to put up a concrete retaining wall and a semicircle around it uh, to keep uh, the hills from sliding down into it. Uh, it. It's just to ensure the integrity of the future of this uh, very expensive and very needful piece of equipment to purchase water storage tank. Uh, it, it was uh, estimated to be $200,000. Uh, the village of Mimarinik's cost would be $57,600. And it will come obviously out of our water fund. Any questions or concerns? None? This is when we just painted? Or yeah, you're right. Like yeah. Painted inside and out. Mm -hmm. Not we just painted, it caused it to just paint. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson Avenue, we did already, right? Yeah. Uh, Department of State LWRP grant contract? Uh, this is the grant that the village received for designing the repair to the West Basin Seawall. Mm -hmm. uh, it took a while for us. Or five months to draft contract. So I'm just asking if you the board for the next meeting so we mm -hmm. uh, authorize that we'll begin uh, the RFP process. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's great. When will, if, if we do the RFP, what's the projection of fixing that? Mm. Uh, it's going to be a couple of years. I mean, we'll probably be in detail design for the next part of the So this is for. Um, the area that's falling down, or yeah. more, so it's by the um, senior center and the. Yeah, it's pulling away from the shoreline. Yeah, if you go to the Coast Guard building, you can see the. 
crack between the no, fence. No, no, I understand that. We had, we had to put up guardrails, to guard fence to keep people from falling in. I understand. And if you look at it from the water, you can see it bulging out. The amazing strength of water. Okay, uh, good. This, this brings us perfectly on time. Um, huh. We. Uh, the first time I heard is the Hurricane Ida. I that was the, about the, uh, the Sheriff's uh, Hudson Avenue Bridge, uh, all which we're asking for to be on tonight's meeting. What is that? Uh, that's item 2A. Two 2A, two two I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so, even uh, one of the things that was damaged as a result of Hurricane Ida was a section of the retaining wall on the Hudson <laughs> Avenue Bridge, which is not part, not in the scope of the bridge replacement project. Uh, so, we were working with our engineers on HVEA since they're already out there, they have all the information. Uh, we were you know, going to get a quote from Villa because they're mobilized on site already. It doesn't make sense to have another contractor come in and mobilize and fight with them for space. Uh, and we were working with FEMA on the project approach because uh, one of the things that we discovered during this process was that the current wall is not entirely on village property. And FEMA is not going to give us Money if we don't have legal right to be somewhere. So we have to take a different approach to keep everything on village property. Uh, so the design is done. We just got the official estimate. Uh, I think it was May 6th or 7th, and it wasn't in time to be on the last uh, work session. Uh, and since the work really needs to occur before the board's next meeting on June 13th. We're asking for your consideration of a supplemental appropriation to fund this work uh, at tonight's meeting. And this is non reimbursed, non FEMA reimbursement. No, this is, you know, this is oh, it is, it says it right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, everybody, fine, put this on the agenda. Sure. Yes. Okay, so is that on the agenda or do I have to add it? I know it is on the agenda. On the agenda. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know the board. Just yeah. Okay, I just, want, I just wanted to refresh her. All right. Um, let me go to the executive session packet. Uh, LMC, after we vote on going into the executive session, uh, make sure that we're not broadcasting and then there's no sound coming out and you can take a powder for a little while, okay? Okay. Before you do the resolution, I ask that you add one item. What? McCrory uh, Teeker against the village of the Mariner. Say that again, Bob. McCrory Teeker. McCrory Teeker against the village of the Mariner. Ah, sure. <laughs> it should just be on there permanently. <laughs> McCrory, Teekert, Ray, Village of Mamara. For litigation. We, and we also need advice of counsel. Yeah, you don't have to make that in the motion. 105 uh, Wendy. Okay. I'm going I'm to make this all one motion. Uh, USA EPA versus Westchester Joint Waterworks. Uh, executive session pursuant to 105.1D. Uh, Hampshire uh, Recreation LLC versus the Village of America and Village of America Planning Board. That is also under the exemption of 105.1D. Uh, another litigation, uh, 306 Fayette Realty versus the Village of America. Uh, Land Use Board Secretary. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1c of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss the medical, financial, and employment history of a particular person or corporation. And the last item, item E, McCrory Tickert, Ray, Village of Mamara. Excuse me, Mayor, it's Sally. Um, Mr. Frankel was asked to attend tonight to discuss the EEOC claim, and he's in attendance. I thought we had decided that they weren't going to be in attendance. No, that was for the what are we going to talk to you again? He was going to give us an update. There is no update. This she, was, she was doing some research. Was going to give us an update. Okay. Yeah, it, I, I don't think we need to talk to Mr. Frankel right now. We have enough to talk about. Um, okay, I make those motions. Second. Morgan Cole. Trustees Young? Yes. Trustees Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. 
Mayor Murphy? Aye. I'll see you on executive. Uh, Augie, get me an executive session here. Let me set up the cameras here. Okay. Mics are still on. They're on for Zoom. Thank you. Oh. Hey, Dan, is there another water in there? Thank you, sir. Oh, Does anyone else want water or mm -hmm. Diet Coke? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, sir. Bob wants a Diet Coke. Diet Coke. I remember that. Going. Diet Coke with oh. caffeine. Diet soda. I uh, just get yeah, a kind of Diet soda. I just. The only carbonated beverage I drink nowadays is the, uh, uh, the black cherry. Uh, sparkling water from CVS. Okay. I don't drink sparkling water. water is good. Yeah, but that's not. Well, not not, 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 not not the seltzer. I don't mind the. It's not the. the it's not the. Like, it's not the effervescence. It's. I just don't like that fake sugar. But the uh, actually Coke Zero, I can tolerate for the rest of the thing. Well, do you need me to go on and mute the mics for Zoom? Yes. Okay. Well, is it? Is it? Um, How's Victor doing? Is it Victor on Zoom or no? Uh, oh yeah, he is on Zoom. Well, then we do. Whatever you did worked.
Can you hear me? There's no audio on Zoom coming from the room. It looks like you're all muted. How are we doing? Thank you. I hear you now. Thank you. Okay. All right. Augie, thank you. Once again, a job well done. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. You have to repeat what you said the last 10 minutes. No, I just was all full. Uh, okay. Good evening. We voted to open the meeting. Yeah. You voted to adjourn the work session and open this meeting. Okay, so while we'll muted, and we'll set the rock and roll. Do you want us to redo it again, sir? Yes. yes. He really wants oh. us to do it again. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Okay, for the okay. record. Uh, for the record, uh, I need a motion to close the work session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, in the executive session, uh, we took two votes. The one vote was to re Verse uh, McCrory and Siegert, uh for court costs, uh, Ray, one of their litigations against the village. Uh, that was a one, one vote with myself voting no. Uh, the other vote uh, was to file a notice. Bob, help me out there. Notice, notice of appeal uh, for the Hampshire litigation. And that was a unanimous vote. Okay. Pledge. And we did the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm not going to do that again. Uh, the first item is the adoption of the agenda. Open the meeting. All right. I thought, oh, I need a motion to open the meeting. So, so moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.
Adoption of the agenda? Yes. Yeah. Everyone make a motion? I move. So move. Second. Corgi Cole. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the first item is a presentation from the Juneteenth uh, Commission. Uh, and who is going to lead this? Is it going to be you, Jared, or is it going to be Monica? Monica? It'll be me. Yeah. Um, you can call Hi, me Nika. Hi, how are you? Hi, Nika. Good. Thank you. How are you? Thank you for doing this tonight. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you for having us. Would it be possible to share my screen? Yes. Or we, is it possible for Nika to share her screen? No. She should have control. You should be able to do it now. Okay. Thank you. Can everyone see? Yes. yes Great. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Monica Victoria. You can call me Nika. I'm representing Juan Mamaronik in this evening's presentation on the upcoming Juneteenth event um, to be held Saturday, June 18th from 12 to 6. Um, <clears throat> I am on the board of Juan Mamaronik. I'm also a parent in the school district. Um, Juan Mamaronik is a local community organization whose mission is to, is to promote diversity and works toward meaningful change in the hopes of creating unity and solidarity in Mamaronek, regardless of race or class. And I'm also joined by Jarrett Winchester, a longtime resident of Mamaronek and task force member at 1M. Um, the Juneteenth event is sponsored by 1 Mamaronek um, and planned by Mamaronek residents and Village of Mamaronek staff. Thank you for that. Um, so one of the things that we would like to kind of reiterate is what is Juneteenth? Um, Juneteenth became a recognized federal holiday on June 17th of last year when President Joe Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act into law. Um, and Leilani um, is uh, one of the many people who are participating in putting this together. Um, and she wrote, we are not free until we are all free. Um, and this Juneteenth basically was on January 1st, 1863, President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation that declared that all persons held as slaves were free. On June 19th, 1865 is when the message that slavery was over came to Texas. Um, and again, it became a recognized federal holiday June 17th of last year. Um, in previous years, 1M has created Juneteenth celebrations, but this year will be the biggest yet. Um, thanks to Village of Mamaronek, um, the Juneteenth celebration theme is ancestral spiritual awakening. Um, we're highlighting the five pillars in the black community, which are faith, food, family, entertainment, music, sports, um, and movies, and education. Um, <clears throat> it's a family. It's a family-friendly event filled with music, games, and uh, even uh, basketball. Uh, tournament, food demonstrations, and a whole, a whole much, like much, much more. Um, and this year, all the proceeds will go to Realm, uh, recognizing the enslaved Africans of Mamaronek and Larchmont. Um, I don't know if Leilani is there and wants to say anything about the scheduling. I, um, ultimately, we want to celebrate the diverse community that is Mamaronek and Larchmont um, with this event. Uh, I don't know if she wanted to, we have like, we're kind of, we're still putting uh, together a lot of the scheduling. Um, and, you know, so I don't, I don't know if Jared wanted to say anything either, but um, I think most important for, for us, for what Marinick was really just to give um, the black community in the Marinick this platform and this space to celebrate this event. Uh, Jared? Uh, good evening. Um, Jared Winchester here. 
Yeah, just to go off what Nika said, um, I, I think it's more of a celebration for the whole community, not just the black community. Um, uh, we were trying to ask also about the repainting of the mural because of COVID. Uh, when we had the flood, we had to delay that. Um, and so uh, Jason has been working with us. Um, I think by now everybody pretty much, at least who wants to know, knows what Juneteenth is. We've had a couple of good runs down the harbor. And uh, I, we just think with a smaller, intimate space, we could really make it shine. Um, and I just want to thank the village for whatever support they can give us. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you, you said everybody who wants to know knows. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm uh, 60 years old. Uh, I've read way more history than the average person. And uh, I did not know about this until maybe five or six years ago. So this is a prime example of how all of our history is not taught in our schools. And uh, it should be. And, uh, and um, thank you for uh, bringing this to the forefront and uh, allowing folks to then learn a little bit about where we are, who we are, what happened, uh, and uh, to deal with what happened and to move forward, but to move forward in knowledge and the real history and it's because you know every, every country has a real history, right? And uh, it, it's important that we recognize it so that we can move forward and heal from it. Because you know, in, in my 60 years, the, the hiding of it has not helped anything. But anybody I, else? I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Well, thank you all for your presentation this evening. And uh, I look forward to the celebration. Thanks, so do we. What is the two participant space? Okay, thank you both. Uh, Jason, do you want to say anything? Jason, unmute yourself. Jason? Um, no, May, I'm here just in case uh, anyone had questions about from village staff about the event. Uh, I, I'm sure that the village staff has the situation well in hand, am I right? Yep, we got under control. We're good. Jerry's been helping a lot and uh, keeping everyone in the loop. So thank you. Warning, giving them warnings. You're, you're, you're been working. That's really what I do. You're a constant source of comfort to me, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next up is uh, Mr. Barbario is going to do the MS4 presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, Jared. From the beginning. Looks good? Yeah, it looks good. All right, MS4 20, 2022 report. So as I've explained in a couple of years, for a couple of years now, um, the MS4 report presentation is a requirement that we have. Um, the reason we have this requirement in certain population size municipalities um, that have a storm um, sewer system separate from the sanitary sewer system um, is required to, to uh, fill out an MS4 um, report, which is our general permit, and then do an annual uh, presentation. The uh, DEC requires us to report on six individual topics public education and outreach, which is the distribution of material and outreach activities, mostly cleanup events, and a lot of what the Marine Education Center, Kyle Troy does for us. Uh, public participation and involvement, uh, which is really trying to get citizens to help um, and develop, implement, and, and review the revisions of the uh, stormwater management program. We haven't done too much on that, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, illicit discharge detection and elimination. Uh, that we've been very successful with uh, last year. Um, it focuses on, on outfalls and, and illicit discharges to, to the storm uh, sewer system. The MS4 report um, reports the number of outfall inspections as well as the illicit discharges reported, confirmed, and eliminated. Construction site runoff control, uh, we're constantly doing that. We develop, implement, and enforce an erosion and sediment control program for construction activities. We make sure uh, that they're enforced um, 
although it's uh, for areas disturbed greater than uh, one acre of land, uh, we do make sure that even if it's smaller than that, that they have um, um, some sediment control and erosion control, at least to the, the minimum um, requirement. Number five is post-construction runoff. Uh, the report, um, the MS4 reports about stormwater controls uh, and preventive actions and protecting sensitive areas and the use of structural controls such as uh, grass swales and uh, porous pavement. Number six is pollution prevention and uh, good housekeeping. Uh, so we discussed prevention and reduction of pollutant runoffs uh, from our municipal operations and includes uh, training municipal staff on pollution prevention measures and activities and also making sure that they're aware of uh, certain, uh, certain activities that they, uh, as they go about their daily tasks and responsibilities, that they're looking out for uh, certain sources of pollution. All six topic control measures include a corresponding goal, uh, which, you miss, which we create uh, and uh, we wish to achieve in the reporting period, um, the assessment of that goal, and then what we wanna do for the next reporting period. So for minimum control measure number one, which is public education and outreach, uh, we post information and videos on our website and distribute printed material in various locations. Uh, a large part of it is on our website, uh, however, um, and our weekly email blast. And we also continue to connect with the schools, uh, which uh, Kyle Troy does uh, very effectively for us. Um, our evaluation is that we've been successful with the goal of achieving and expanding a video platform. Kyle created a video platform when we weren't allowed to go near people during the pandemic. Um, she again was able to reach over 9,000 viewers and participants, participants this, this past year because we were still, you know, with the ups and downs of the COVID uh, numbers. Uh, we also had uh, this year, this past reporting period, 75 separate cleanup events. So those are all the activities that uh, Kyle um, uh, does with uh, um, schools and, and other uh, individuals who visit the Marine Education Center. Um, our efforts in, in this control measure will continue um, and increase, hopefully, uh, especially the outdoor activities. This is Kyle. Uh, she's at one of her schools. Um, I can tell you that um, last year, after the flood, we had a clean and green event. And then again, this year, even though it's not within the reporting period, May of 2020, we had our, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, actually, I think a week ago, we had our clean and green event. Um, we also, um, we do uh, involvements with uh, volunteers by doing uh, volunteer catch basin markings, uh, which we have not done much of, but we want to continue to do that. And uh, with Kyle's help and, and the village focusing on public events, um, we will continue to do public events as we can um, and try to increase those numbers, although there are quite a few public events. Um, Control measure number three, illicit discharge and detection. This is where we've had some success. We continue to investigate. Our goal is to continue to investigate illicit discharge, inspects our outfalls, and then update our, our record keeping process when we, uh, when we move into Municipality 5. Um, obviously, we're working on the conversion to Municipality 5 every week. But last reporting period, we were able to detect 28 illicit discharge connections and eliminated 27 of them. There's still one that's outstanding that we have not been able to eliminate. Um, and that will eventually end up in court with me and others um, representing the village. Our current goal is to continue to investigate illicit discharges and eliminate their sources. We've had success in this, in this um, goal because we're actively working on our uh, sewer remediation project and part of the evaluation and the uh, order on consent is to try to detect and eliminate as many illicit discharges as possible. So we did an excellent job with that last year. We also found 18 of the 20 missing manholes throughout the village. So we had uh, an APB out on 20 missing manholes and we still have two missing. Um, amazing to me that, uh, that that's an actual fact, but it is. Our measure, our control measure number four, um, that's really to, to try to revise the local stormwater code. Um, we haven't done much with that. 
obviously, you know, prolonged COVID, and then we had an event in September, um, just redirects the staff and, and the Board of Trustees focus. Um, but what we want to do is um, potentially look at revising the code and, and including that um, at the same time as we upgrade Municipal 5. Control measure number five is post-construction. Post-construction practices will continue to be monitored by the village engineer and uh, building department staff. And once municipality is upgraded and we utilize the sewer maintenance division staff, uh, we'll assist in auditing the, the various functions. And we'll try to make that um, better uh, as we try to do a lot of things up in the uh, building department uh, with their staff. We're working on the conversion, as I've said a couple of times, to track post-construction activities um, Municity will help us with that significantly, and I hope that uh, um, by this time next year, I can tell you that we're having success with um, Municity 5, um, because if I don't, then uh, we're going to have some problems. Number six. Number six is my favorite, because you get to see the truck that I love. Um, we typically want to inspect and clean about 300 catch basins uh, last year. We were on track in, in the uh, spring and summer. Uh, and then in the fall, we got hit with uh, Ida and that pretty much redirected everyone. Um, it also, if you look at this truck, the water level was um, at the emblem on the door approximately um, as this was sitting at Fayette. So what we had to do is we had to put our truck on a tractor trailer, send it back to the builder and dealer and have uh, um, significant service done on the truck, including the fluids and other items associated with uh, how this operates. So we lost the truck uh, and we didn't get it back until I believe it was early December. So we, we lost it for a few months. Um, so we're down on the number of catch basins we clean, but I'll, I'll make sure that staff uh, makes up for that uh, in, this, uh, in this coming year. So, so some of the highlights, obviously, we continue to hit uh, the, the 9,000 uh, views. Um, we also, and I should have put it on this slide, but we also had 75 individual events. Um, we have uh, targeted outfall. It's typically um, the inspections are, are 25 per year. Um, we're actually uh, um, doing that easily. Um, we've swept 368 miles of paved roads and 45 acres of parking lot. Uh, our primary achievement, this is a little bit of, of a borrowing from last, last marking period is that we still have, um, so we have 30 DPW and sewer division employees that are trained on stormwater awareness. But what we're doing now is when we are boarding new employees, we'll provide the same training to them. So as they come in, that's part of their onboarding process. I do want to mention that we continue to do a good job with the MS4 uh, report. Uh, for two years in a row now, we've submitted the report before the June 1st deadline and the DC central uh, office acknowledged receipts and, and never said anything uh, about any correction or any issues or problems. So um, it looks like we're doing a pretty good job. This year, I did have to solicit the assistance of our uh, consulting engineer just because there's a lot going on over here. But uh, obviously, I made up uh, this presentation and asked them um, not to do the presentation so that I could do it to the board. I could do it for the board this evening. That's it, Mike. Thank you. Do uh, you think that when, uh, when we have the village engineer on staff, uh, some of these responsibilities and oversight will roll over to him or her? Yeah, most of them, if not all of them, will roll over to her or him. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you for doing this, Jerry. Thank you very much. If there's any questions, I can I can try to answer. If not, we do have a um, a website set up for questions. I just want to pull that out, Mayor, if you give me a chance to find it for a second. Um, it is two zero two three. Let's see here. I'm almost there. MS four at vomni.org. 2023 MS4 at Bomney, New York. No. Once again, that address is. You got me? 2023 MS4 
at Vomney NY. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's about LMC TV. Can, can you ever do uh, titles underneath when we do stuff like that? Or is that, is that future LMC TV? LMC Media. That's future LMC Media. Okay. Right. LMC TV Media. See, I'm dating myself by calling you TV. Probably need them. Um, Dan, you have a question? If the public doesn't have any, I do have a, a quick question. Go ahead. <clears throat> Jerry, thank you very much for um, the, going through the report. Sure. Uh, and your, uh, and it, you've mentioned the municipality. Municip Can you tell me where we are in, on the timeline? And yeah, so we were struggling to get um, worksheets from, um, from our vendor, uh, which we just received. I think I got an email from Cliff and Brittany on Thursday, where we received a uh, sample um, reports. Uh, sample documents. And um, what we were doing now is just culling through that and seeing what we can use and what we don't really need. Um, so we're moving ahead with the final portion of directing them on what has to be um, actually composed uh, for, the, uh, for the software package that we have. So are we still on task one? We're past task one. We did the worksheets for them. Then we asked them to give us a <coughs> I think Augie is task one, the worksheets, and task two. Do you recall? I can't recall. I don't that. recall the workflow open. Yeah. So if you can supply the board with a, uh, a updated uh, timeline with uh, you know anticipated dates, that would be helpful. Yeah. So so Sally's on. Sally, how often do we do our meeting? Is it once every two weeks? So what we'll do is. Jerry, we were doing them once a week, once every two weeks, depending on people's schedules. But uh, once every two weeks is the most we go between meetings. So right after the meeting, I'll task staff to provide a quick summary of our meeting uh, and, and send it to the board uh, right after our meeting, which is uh, once every two weeks. Yeah, that's great. But I also would like a timeline so we can track it. Oh, yeah. So, so if we're slipping, we can do it or if we're ahead, that's even better. OK, we'll, we'll provide the timeline. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you. Thank sure. you. That, that, that concludes tonight's presentations. Uh, the first item is communication to the boards. And let me just say this before we get started. Uh, everybody gets five minutes, uh, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, and no matter how pressing your concern, there's a five minute timeline that I'm going to enforce. And the first up, is a gentleman named Bernie. Hello, Bernie. Oh, you got Bernie? I got it. Uh, uh, hi. Hi, Bernie, how are you? Yes, Good. Sir. Um, I, I just wanna talk about the dam, of, of course. Um, Jerry sent me an email, an email that I briefly read, so I didn't really read over it. So I have a lot of questions. And by the way, Jerry's doing a fabulous job, tremendous. Uh, he's worth his weight in gold, put it that way. Um, but uh, from from what I'm reading is we're uh, you're going to study, Jerry. There's going to be a hydrology study, correct? And there's going to be the long term impact of the dam and the flooding and all that is is all in the report. So, uh, um, go ahead and make the comments, Bernie, and then we'll get to some. Questions. Okay. Okay. So from what I've read briefly is the hydrology, you're going to do the impact. You're going to do the study of the engineer. Um, my next question is, um, if, if it's, if it's, if it's going to make a better place for Mamaronic and we need a new dam are is, are you guys looking into the environmental bond act through the state with with the uh, all the money for the watersheds um and are you going to vote on this for tonight on this dam whether to for this proposal this ninety four thousand dollars because i think you need to make a decision asap and we need to you know get this this ball rolling and 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 get everything you know and get everything started um and my, my, my last comment is that every, everyone needs to be on the same page with this dam and we, and we all need to get together and we all have to agree 
We all have to play nice. All of the board members need to play nice in this. And there's no politics. Please let there not be politics in this whole, this whole dam issue and this, this study on the dam. It needs to get done. It has to get done. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, I can tell you that it's going to be voted on tonight. Jerry, would you like to answer the other question that Mr. Kamara had? Yeah, so, so uh, Bernie, my immediate, um, my immediate concern right now is dealing with the DEC and the board um, will um, address it later on in the meeting. I'm not sure where, but they'll address it later on in the meeting. Um, the, uh, the, study, the study and the more complicated uh, situations regarding the dam will be in conjunction with uh, uh, the Waterworks who is our, uh, uh, I guess they're a co-owner or uh, an owner. We're not, not really sure, but it doesn't matter. I gotta deal with the DEC. Um, and uh, I think you'll see or learn more later on when the board um, takes this item up for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. What, what, what about the, um, the, uh, the Environmental Bond Act? Are, you, or are we looking oh. into that? No, I haven't yet. No, uh, to be honest with you, I haven't yet. Um, so I will look into that and you know, discuss that with our consultants. Once right, and, and that's a bond. That's a bond that has to be passed this year. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that yeah, no, no, no. I understand that they have to vote on it in November. But but is it is it is it wise for us to start applying for it now? You know no, what I mean? No, or or you I, can't do that. I don't think you could do it until it actually exists, Bernie. But right. okay, uh, Steve Otis, who's who's on that uh, like very closely. Uh, always, always gives us the information as soon as it's available. Okay. And I can guarantee you he does that. Okay. So our, our, our eye will be on that ball, but thank you for bringing it up. Steve, Steve spoke at the meeting the other night. He came up and spoke at the meeting uh, towards yes. the end. And he talked to Bernie. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I spoke to him and I, I, I emailed him. So I'm, I, I, I'm, my question was, is, is, is it, is it, you know, should we get the ball rolling now before it, you know, before it's too late? Because once that money comes out, you know, everyone wants to grab a part of that money. We'll be on it. Okay. We'll be on it. Thank you, Bernie. Have a good evening. All right. You guys made me happy tonight about the dam. So uh, vote yes. You know if I can make one person happy today, I, I, had, a, I had a good day. <laughs> well, you didn't make me happy. Make me happy by voting yes for the I got for you. the I got for you. the study. I got you. Still have a chance. All right, uh, <laughs> the, the ever popular Mr. Tibbet. Love this guy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Hi, Bernie. Okay. Uh, Jerry, I had a uh, question uh, on the water report. Yeah. We have a uh, lot of private properties that, um, as they built, either had water retention, uh, including um, uh, treatment and such, as part of their um, agreements with the village. Do we have a list of who has such water retention contracts and if they are doing the proper maintenance on them? I had asked yeah. Hermani this a few years ago. And he said that they had a, a list and they were looking to, uh, and I'd asked if uh, he could, if they could put the list together and just make sure that the owners of the property uh, gave the village notice and showed that they were keeping up the proper maintenance on the water retention on their properties. So, so the, the upgrade to Municipality 5 will convert that list into a schedule where we'll have to, or incrementally, or, or in an interval uh, period, we'll have to do the inspections to make sure everyone is following up. We're doing it now old school with paper, and uh, sometimes that's not the best way to do it, um, but um, we are doing uh, those things um, um, as, the, uh, as the building department uh, goes around and does their uh, inspections. Right. Is, is this not something that Municipality 5 will help uh, facilitate? Uh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yep. It'll create an automated uh, um, pickler scheduling. Yep, a pickler. Exactly right. And that's exactly what we need. We can do work. We just need to be, we just tickled. need to remember to do it. Yeah. You need to be tickled. Tickled. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Jerry. And then. Oh. And don't let them put you on the diet. You're worth your weight in gold. Don't, don't let them short you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Glenn. Have a good evening. I'll, I'm sure I'll talk to you later, but thank you, Glenn.
Uh, <laughs> order of the bills. There were no public hearings tonight. No. Order of the bills. Let me go to the bills tonight. And the first item is the over budget accounts. Uh, so we will be transferring from the first item is we're transferring eighteen thousand uh, dollars from the appropriated fund balance to office administ administration office contract services, uh, Janny King Cleaning Office Cleaning and Additional Service and Courtroom and Supplies. Uh, this next item on the agenda is for utility bills from appropriated fund balance, uh, 5,800 to the public safety building, uh, 25,000 to street lighting, 6,000 uh, to these lights at Lanza Field for softball. I imagine that this has to do with the rising power costs that we are all experiencing yep. in our own lives. Uh, Marine Education Center. This is, I love this. This is for the House of Fins invoice. Mm -hmm. And this <laughs> and is oh. the supplies for setup and fish food. Uh, 11,150 from appropriated fund balance to marine education supplies and 1,100 to marine education contract services. Uh, if Marine Education Center is open again on the weekends, uh, so if you're down there uh, for any reason, but especially if you have youngsters uh, who are participating in sports down there, please take them over to the Marine Education Center and visit our, 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 our many volunteers and summer staff and Kyle and the, the kids will, will love it and they will get a little education about the environment that they live in. Uh, the next is Justice Court personnel, 22,000. $22,000 uh, from justice personnel to justice uh, court contract services. So I will make a motion uh, with this resolution uh, to fund those over budget accounts. I need a second. Second. Uh, please call the roll. Yes. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Sikor? Yeah. Mayor Murphy? Hi. Uh, Glenn, could you mute yourself, buddy? Thank you. Uh, Ida Contract Services, resolution author. No, I'm sorry, I must have skipped something here. Okay, so, yeah, you're right. You're right, didn't. You're right. Uh, resolution authorizing budget amendment for Hurricane Ida Contract Services. Uh, this is to take $100,000 out of the general revenue and put it to Ida Contract Services, which is a line we created, obviously, after Ida. Jerry, you want to explain this a little bit? Now, Mayor, this is to close out some of the, um, the crane rental that we continue to uh, utilize to uh, pull stuff out of the river that continues to show up, um, repairs at volunteers, and then we have a, uh, a storm pipe, storm drain situation uh, over on Ralph and uh, Gertrude, uh, that's gonna be part of this. Okay, and we discussed that situation on Ralph and Gertrude at the Army Corps meeting the other night also, didn't we? Yep. So yeah. To our residents that live over there, uh, that problem will soon be eradicated. There's a, there's a 50, more than 50% blockage in the pipe right now, and I gotta get it fixed as soon as possible. I'm meeting with the, uh, with the school, uh, with our director of facilities there so that I can, uh, maybe bring the timing up a little bit and try to get that done when the kiddies are not at the school. Well, well time, well time. After them soon. Um, okay, so I need a motion please for this. So, so second. Okay, uh, Dan and Nora, thank you. Uh, Augie, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Uh, aye. Hmm. Uh, and just, I, I, I've been asked to identify that this is iced tea that I'm drinking. Because uh, some resident asked if it was Jack Daniels. And uh, no, it's not. You'd see a much different mayor. <laughs> It'd be much more interesting. Uh, the ordered voucher is uh, $2,092,889.39. Is anybody on the board of any questions or concerns? Just a question 
uh, on page 42. Uh, I have no problems with the expenses for the sanitary sewer uh, I and I program. Mm -hmm. David, Secretary, could you give us an update uh, for so people will know where we are on stage one, two, three, four? Uh, sure. So instead of saying today, the numbers, it just the areas because I think people don't can follow uh, the previous discussions that we've had. All right. So you want an update on where our sewer project is? Uh, all point repairs are completed. All slip lining has been completed except for two or three uh, smaller areas. And we are on Ward Avenue right now doing a full cut repair. Uh, we plan to move to the uh, Washingtonville neighborhood probably within the next um, week and a half. So by the end of next week, beginning of the week after, they should be completed with Ward, which happens to have a significant amount of rock underneath that uh, roadway. So we're chipping away at rock uh, every single day. Um, so we're doing full cut repair on Ward right now. And we apologize for any inconvenience. I know it looks like we're doing all the construction at once and maybe part of that is true, but um, we're getting a lot of work um, done and a lot of things that have been sitting around for a long time repaired. And they're, they're good at keeping the road open when they can. As, as, as they can, it's a, that's a tough yeah. spot there. And, and after we finish uh, Washingtonville, where do you move to? Uh, we go into the next phase. So I'll have a full presentation on that. Once, once we finish with Ralph and Gertrude and Center, Washington and Madison, then we would have the uh, first phase completed and we move into the second phase, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll present that to the board and I'll show them. Um, that's another significant round of funding, uh, almost uh, just, uh, just under $3 million. What's the time frame on that, Jerry? Uh, 18 months, and hopefully I have an engineer to help me with that um, within the next six, five or six months. Okay, thank you. Uh, my concerns are on page seven. Uh, White, White, Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah. Uh, we are spending on Mr. Tickert's litigation. Uh, over fifteen thousand uh, dollars. First of all, do, do we know why there are two bills and what and wasn't consolidated into one bill? The only thing I can think of, Mayor, is it's monthly. On, on one case. Yeah, one month for 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 the last part of uh, uh, February, it was twenty three hundred seventy eight dollars, and then for okay, the month of March. Thirteen thousand five. Great. Uh, so that's fifteen thousand right there. And then Bob from your firm, uh, under the McCrory Flagler. This this is where she took an appeal. That's right. And this is costing us sixteen thousand four hundred dollars. Yes. I'm not sure that's all of it, but that's whatever was during this period. Not wrong. Not wrong indeed. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, and, and I also just want to. I want to check. You know, White and Osterman have a lot of uh, uh, invoice stuff to uh, to applicants, right? And, and I looked at it. I think it was like eighty nine hundred dollars in this billing period for applicants uh, to, to reimbursed uh, from uh, them. So, what does their? And can we check on this? What does their contract actually cover? Because I know we're paying them, you know, a healthy retainer every month, but it seems like everything they do gets billed back to an applicant. So, you know, I just want to make sure that if there's stuff that shouldn't be billed to applicants, it's not getting billed to them because, you know, I think these applicants are, you know, having to go back many, many times and it's, it's running into a lot of money. I hear from a lot of people who are trying to get stuff done in the village that the, the costs sometimes are exorbitant. Okay. So can we check on that? I can check on that um, with Mark uh, if he's willing on Wednesday. I'm sure Mark will be willing. If, if he feels like checking on another attorney, if not, uh, Dan Sarnoff and I can do it. I just, you know. It, it, they work for us on this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anybody else with any other, any other questions or concerns? Um, okay. Uh, I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Augustino. 
Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. And please note when Trustee Kapoor left the meeting. Please pass this down to my friend. Uh, Marine Education Center donation. No. There's something else, but it just says none. I don't know what that is. Is it no business? There's no business. Okay. No, there are. Uh, MEC donation. This is a this is a $50 anonymous donation. Well, to those out there who uh, will remain nameless, thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept it. Second. Augie, please. Trustee is young. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Hillside Avenue bridge repair. Uh, I'm going to let my friend, Mr. Sonoff, explain this because he explained mm -hmm. it so well in the in, in, in work session. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there is a section of the retaining wall that uh, separates the bridge from uh, the adjacent church property that was damaged severely by Hurricane Ida. It's outside the project limits of the current bridge replacement. Uh, we have been working with both FEMA, uh, our engineer from HDEA, as well as Bill Contracting, who is the contractor that's mobilized to repair the bridge. Uh, the quote was received earlier this month. I've been working with FEMA to get everything approved, uh, and the work needs to take place before the board's next meeting, which is June 13th. So we're asking for uh, some mm -hmm. appropriation uh, for this additional work. Uh, that is reimbursable from FEMA. Okay, any questions or concerns? Like I said, one of the East Park Hillside Avenue Bridge. Go ahead, yeah. The bridge sections, like I informed the board, mm -hmm. are going to start being delivered within the next uh, two weeks from now. Uh, so you are going to start seeing major progress with a train on site, the installation, and we're looking to have the bridge open by the end of July. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, there's no questions. Uh, I, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Augustino, sir. Trustee is young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> the next item uh, for C is a salary adjustment. Uh, what this is was at, in, when we approved the village board budget, uh, we approved uh, a list of salaries of folks who aren't represented by the union. Uh, and that gets done in a separate resolution. And inadvertently, uh, this gentleman, James Hunt, who's the assisted uh, building inspector, he was inadvertently left off the list. Uh, and I believe if we approve this tonight, he doesn't lose any money. He doesn't, he, we're not, he, he, he's, we're all square with Mr. Hunt. We're square, right. Okay. Uh, and we apologize to Mr. Hunt. Uh, it is not a reflection of what we think of him. It's a reflection of the, uh, just a bookkeeping error. Uh, so I will gladly make this uh, motion to uh, resolution authorizing a salary adjustment uh, for our friend, Mr. Hunt, Second. and apologize for his uh, being left off. Second. Nora seconds. Uh, please call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Aye. And the next item is to add an item to the agenda. And that'll be about the dam. So I need a motion to add an item to the agenda. So moved. Okay. It's uh, Mr. Young, Ms. Lucas. Dam resolution. Uh, you want to say that. <laughs> Mayor, can you vote on adding the resolution, please? Okay. Thank I, you. I, gotta, you. I saw the joke and I got ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. All in favor of adding the resolution. Aye. Aye. This is why I got the nuns love me. Uh, whereas the New York State Department of Environmental Con Conservation issued four violations to the Mamaronic Reservoir Dam, whereas violations were, were for the lack of a formal inspection and maintenance program, an out of date emergency action plan, submission of annual certification to the New York State DEC by January 31st of each year, preparation of an engineering assessment of a small class C dam. And whereas the village asked for a proposal from GHC, the engineering consulting firm, it has worked with for several years on various issues related to the Mamaronic Reservoir Dam. And whereas 
GHD submitted a proposal to the village of Americ to address these four violations. And whereas staff reviewed this proposal with the board of trustees at a work session meeting and a consensus was reached to move forward with GHD to address the first three violations enumerated and identified as citations 67, 673.6, 636.7, 636.8, 637 now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees authorizes the village manager to execute a professional services agreement with GHD to prepare inspection and maintenance plan, submit, develop and submit to the New York State DEC an emergency action plan and a submission of annual certifications, and be it further resolved that all courts associated with this work be charged to fiscal year 2223 general fund budget account number. A1440.0421 and be it further resolved that upon completion of negotiations with GHD, the village manager prepare a resolution seeking a supplemental appropriation from fund balance to submit to the board of trustees for their consideration in a future meeting and be it further resolved that the village manager is authorized to undertake such administrative acts as may be necessary to effectuate this act's action. I'm making that motion, but I just want to point out that I sent uh, Mr. Sonoff the bare bones of what we talked about, and in 10 or 15 minutes, he whipped out this resolution for us, yep. and, and I'm very impressed, and I really okay. want to thank you. It, it's so nice to know that I can hand that off to somebody and just get it done like that. Thank you very much. Mayor? Second. Yes. If I can correct the numbers that Mr. Sonoff, Mr. Sonoff gave you. Okay. 673.6, 673.7, 673.8 are yeah. the items that need to be addressed with uh, the. I think you just misread. I think no, Tom I didn't just. Misread. I didn't no, misread. He's, he's allowed a Scribner's oh, error, whatever. <laughs> I, had I didn't, I didn't misread. <laughs> okay, with Jerry's correction and knowing that no one is perfect. Uh, I make that motion. Second. Dan seconds. Uh, okay. Please call. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yeah. Dan Murphy? Aye. Uh, Where's and Bernie? And, and before we get to anything else, uh, Mr. Pinto asked me to make an announcement. Uh, Harbor Island Park opens this Friday for the beach season and parking. If you have time at the end of the meeting, plug a great plug would be nice. Oh, now I'm reading exactly what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a nice weekend coming up. It will be open with lifeguards on duty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pinto. I'm sorry, I, I messed up your lead. I read the stage directions, uh, but uh, please come down to Harbor Island Park this weekend. Our staff does an amazing job. Uh, the kiddies can get into the water and uh, enjoy the spray ground, which will be open this year every day. Is that not correct, Jerry? Every day. Every day. Uh, and we thank the Parks Department for really uh, doing an excellent job down at the Parks and Recs Department. A great group of people, and uh, they really look out for our residents. New uh, parking lot. New parking lot. <coughs> right. We have the the parking lot. All right. Second round of communication to the board tonight. No, I think she's going to communicate. You're going to communicate? You, no. no. Good night, Lilani. Good night. Our, our, our only guest is not left. Uh, Mr. Tippett. Yeah. Uh, number one, um, uh, the uh, money that uh, was going uh, for uh, the FEMA, was that actually coming out of the insurance recovery? And at the general fund, correct? Yes, that Jerry is nodding the affirmative. Yes, the answer is okay. Yes. Just clarification on that. What? Where is the um, uh, Juneteenth celebration actually going to be? I um, I missed where the location was. In Columbus Park. Columbus Park. Columbus Park. Right okay. Near, near, near like that area on Van Rants, uh, they're going to be redoing the BLM mural. Okay, and, and that's twelve various, to six. And various other uh, activities. Very good. Um, the uh, FEMA uh, 
FEMA is going to be paying most of the um, wall retention repairs on hill on hill on hillside. Yeah, I'm getting the answer here. Ninety percent. Ninety percent. Ninety percent. Yep. And the, the one other thing is um, uh, you, you still have to have a trustees a meeting about the rest of the capital budget to uh, uh, come to whatever um, conclusion you want for the amount that you're gonna give Jerry uh, to spend over the year. That way he can um, get other projects uh, up, up and running. Uh, you can probably cover uh, most of it as I, I gave the basis of that, you know, if you go five, you know, it's going to cost about $5 million over uh, what you get back in principle, but you can pretty much cover your, your your entire capital budget this year. You might need to make a few adjustments because you did have a, um, you are you are doing the um, dredging. Um, do we have any uh, notice on uh, Halstead Avenue, uh, a report on uh, on the engineering on that yet that they're working on? I don't have one, but I have a, a meeting with the engineer um, first week of June after we come back from the holiday. Okay, and finally, um, Augie, have you uh, put the um, uh, finalized budget for this year up or are you gonna be able to do that in the next couple of weeks? Next couple of weeks, I'm trying to get the taxes out right now, Glenn. I am working on it, but I'm trying to get the taxes out. Okay, no, no rush, just was asking the question. And you are worth your weight in gold too, Augie. So go have an extra hot dog. <laughs> Thank you. Take, Thank take you. care. Uh, one last thing, just everybody remember it's Memorial Day weekend. Click it or they're gonna give a ticket. They're, uh, they're doing heavy enforcement on, um, on seat belts and put down the telephone. When, when you're driving, you know, you're gonna have a lot of people running around beach and everything else. So if you need the text, just pull to the side of the road. Everybody have a wonderful Memorial weekend and uh, just make sure that those new swings set at the harbor are weight certified there, Jerry, if you know what I mean. All right. We'll okay. make sure. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks, Thank you, Jerry. Have a good evening. Uh, okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Report from the village manager. Um, so as Mr. Sonoff was, um, was advising the board, um, sometime early June, we'll have 11 sections of the Hillside Avenue Bridge come through the village. Um, they uh, will cause some significant traffic, not that there isn't any now. Um, we will have um, Hillside uh, pretty much dedicated to the project the entire length from the deli all the way up to the bridge. Uh, we also met at the corner of Van Rance and Jefferson for potential um, staging of bridge sections in and around that area as well because of access uh, to the construction site. So we apologize, but it will be um, a little crazy, a little bit crazier than it is right now. And, you know, I beg everyone's patience, let's put it that way. I have three items for the record. They are uh, Division of Homeland Security Emergency Services Agreement for the open space study at the Sheldrake River. We have the MOU with the um, power extension contract. And then we have the agreement uh, with New York State Thruway Authority to put a large pipe around our manhole cover um, to extend that up for the soil uh, that they're doing right near 95. Do, do, do we have any idea uh, when they're going to be done with that work on 95 and when they're going to be out of that uh, area? Uh, the work the work around 95? You mean that the county's doing at the... Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I mean that, you know, that area uh, before you get to 95, if you're going up on <coughs> Maronick Avenue on the right, where that huge, like, a uh, pile of dirt is that used to not be there. Uh, that that is the throughway authority's property. New to ramp. That that yeah before yeah that uh, they have uh, yeah usually allowed us to use in the off season when they they weren't doing maintenance on the highway like yeah. for probably twenty years we used that to dump snow. Yeah, they're stockpiling that soil. I think I may have mentioned this. They stockpiling that soil when they finish the Porchester uh, Home Depot uh, Marriott area that they're doing. 
Okay. Whatever, okay. whatever street that, whatever road that is there. I don't we, know. we don't have an ETA on it? No, I don't have an ETA, but that all that soil will be used uh, for final grading and filling in and around that yeah. project area. Because it would be nice to get that land back. They were so, always, they were always generous with that. So Jerry, the, the soil that's there is going to come out, correct? Yes. It's going to come out. So, yeah, they stockpiled it there. So, but if we raise the manhole above that, then we then have to take it down later, right? Yeah, no. So they will have to take it down later there. Okay. That's why they're putting it in sections. Okay. So that's Thank part you. of the MOI that uh, that they they will yeah. take it down. They're putting it in, you know, they're putting it in, in like they're stacking, they're stacking the sections in. And they'll address that later on. That okay. won't be as difficult. Well, uh report for the clerk treasurer. But before we leave the manager, excuse me. Uh you were gonna give us an update on the river gauges. No, that'll be on the 13th. I, I believe I said on the 13th because I haven't had time to connect with the uh, um, with that individual yet connected with in the past. Uh, so that was on June 13th. I will have a, a report during my report. Okay. Could we also have a timeline on it uh, with that report, please? Yeah, I'll get as much information as I can. Okay. Uh, in the billing department, um, it's come to my attention. Uh, from a lot of citizens that not all of the forms that are on the website are fillable. Uh, many of them are just PDF solid. And in this day and age, that could be easily corrected. I would hope that uh, with your attention to the building department, we can change that. So, so during, friendly. during the two training sessions that we had uh, last month and then just recently uh, last week, um, that is a task that IT, um, Cliff, can do for us, and uh, we've had him running around doing some other stuff. So he'll get to it um, soon, I hope, and we'll be able to have all those fillable. Okay. Um, uh, also, some people brought up the question of the leaf blower flyer that you uh, very well uh, handed out, uh, you know, on door hangers last year, which was very effective. I know that we're now using the uh, speed sign uh, in some locations but there seems to be a lack of understanding in many areas of the village. Maybe we could do the, um, uh, the uh, door hanger again. I have a feeling that was a work session item um, that we may not have gotten to. Um, yeah. Right? So yeah. I think it's, hold on a second. Leaf, leaf blower signage. That's a work session item um, that we need to address and communication. Okay. Okay, and last but not least, uh, on the parking on the um, uh, south side of uh, uh, Boston Post Road, um, there are no signs that say no parking where the Fireman's Memorial is. Uh, it's painted that way, but there are no signs, and so nobody, nobody knows that they're, you know, they're not supposed to park there, so that's always uh, uh, been uh, abused. Uh, and it's not, there's very little signage about that you have to now pay. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of signs, but it's if you don't know about where those signs are, you don't know that you have to pay anymore. You, you don't have to pay yet, but we will have oh. the signs. We just, you don't have to pay until June 1st. And we'll have those signs up as well as the uh, each each space mark uh, at June, on June 1st. We're working on that this week. Thank you. Yep. Uh, uh, Jerry, could you give us a quick update on uh, how the river maintenance is going? Uh, sure. So today, uh, James and I talked about uh, the Columbus Park area, um, particularly where we're um, right near the parking lot, where we're going to cut down um, that, um, that vegetation. Uh, we're going to start to talk to our tree contractor because as we've assessed along the rivers, there are quite a few dead trees still standing along the rivers, which require a crane and a grapple. So uh, we're going to shift to the Columbus Park area for a little while and then move into the Mamaroneck River uh, backwards, of course. And I will um, connect with the uh, with our tree contractor um, and uh, and James to mark every tree that, that's dead that needs to be eliminated because that inevitably will end up in the river. So, and that's extensive, that's quite a, quite a bit. Appreciate it, thanks, they're doing great work. Uh, could, could, would it be possible to put those locations on the uh, on the website, uh, the village website, maybe a map or something like that so people can follow it. No, so so as far as the river maintenance? Yeah, yeah. It, 
we're we're at Columbus now because they got through the Sheldrake area. We're at Columbus, and then we'll be we'll be working our way backwards the Mermaronic River. So behind Pecones is our first area, Leicester, uh, Howard, Hillside, and then move through that. Um, I understood, but maybe maybe that could, could that could be indicated on on the website where we are where okay. we're currently working because okay. people so we, people ask me and I'm always, I'm I'm never sure I have to. Yeah, we, we can give you some time frames of what we what areas we intend to work on what we so we can do that. Okay, thanks. Sure. More for uh, uh, Jerry and um, uh, Tom. Cool. Uh, regarding the Army Corps of Engineers um, project. Um, I heard that uh, that the 88 million is there, but that uh, the stock the um, stakeholders have to pay their share. Uh, it is not, uh, you know, we thought that it was not going to be, but I understand it now is that we have to pay. Is that correct? Uh, I, I don't think that it's clear that the village has to pay anything, but it, I think it is clear that the uh, state and the county do. Okay. Right. Well, according to, uh, I don't know, I went online because it, uh, the, the guidance memorandum uh, says that uh, all the stakeholders have to pay. Um, I don't know if that means the village does or not. But okay. that's something you, we, you asked me to You know, what I do understand is that they will allow a 30 year mortgage uh, for those who have to pay. Um, yeah, but that, that, that's what I understand. Um, that's, what, that's what I've been told. If I get information to the contrary that we don't have to pay, I will let you know. But uh, that is not my understanding. Okay. I'm sorry if you read it on the website, but it's not what Senator Schumer said. Uh, let's see what's up next. Report from the village attorney. No, I'm sorry, clerk treasurer. Yes, Mayor. First half village taxes are due in June 2002. GP parking permits expire June 1st, 2022. That is all, Mayor. Thank you, buddy. Uh, village Attorney? Nothing from me, Mayor. Uh, minutes, Boards, Commissions, Committees. Uh, minutes of the Board of Trustees Work Session, regular session of May 9th. Minutes of the Board of Architecture Review of April 21st, 2022. Minutes of the Planning Board of April 13th and April 27th, 2022. Minutes of the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee of December 28th, 2021, January 25th and March 22nd, 2022. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that there is a parade, a Memorial Day parade in the village of Mamaronek that uh, starts uh, over by the uh, MAS school and continues down the Maronick Avenue and ends across the street here uh, by the uh, uh, on Prospect Avenue by the American Legion Post. Uh, it is a, a nice parade and uh, our veterans show up. Uh, a lot of them and a lot of uh, community organizations march. And just remember that Memorial Day is for those service members who never made it home. It's for those who gave their life in the service of this country. And uh, it's not just about hot dogs, hamburgers, and uh, going to the beach, which is all very nice. We all like that. But uh, there is a real reason for this holiday. And please bear in mind uh, the men and women who have died from 1776 up until this very moment, uh, fighting for our freedoms and to uh, you know, help the cause of liberty throughout the world. And I'd just like to close the meeting with a moment of silence for them. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Night, Bob. Good night, buddy. Sorry about your dog. Sure. 
I'm coming up. I'm coming. I want the world to know.